commonly used device is the tilting table. So there's, with this, the researcher came up with the idea to design an angle of friction device that can test and determine the angle of friction in different surfaces in order to provide data. So designing, designing and constructing of multi-surface angle of friction device is necessary in order to have the information needed in some granular materials and biomass waste that does, that does not have an existing data. To prepare the students for the actual application of this property in the future, this is, this is studied in school as one of the laboratory activities. Therefore, this study aims to give students a laboratory device that would allow them to test and determine the different angle of friction of the common granular materials and biomass waste available in the area at different material surfaces. So uh, what are the objectives of this study? So the general objective of the study is to design, construct, and test the multi-surface angle of friction device. Specifically, it aims to determine the angle of friction of the different granular materials at different material surfaces and to determine the angle of friction of the different biomass waste at different material surfaces. So significance of the study. This study will be beneficial to the student, students, faculty and staff, educational institutions, and researchers. For the students, the students were the ultimate beneficiary of this study. They will use the device for their laboratory experiments on food processing and other related subjects. For the faculty and staff, this device will be used by the teachers and staff as one of the laboratory equipment for their subject on food processing, waste, utilization, and related subjects. Educational institutions can use this study to expand the learning of the students. For the researchers, this study will provide other researchers of baseline data and information to their researches and projects. So the time and place of the study. For the planning and designing, it, it was done last August to, this, to September 2019. The fabrication of the device was done last October to December 2019 in Molo, Iloilo City. And the actual testing of the device was done at Barangay Bakong Dumangas, Iloilo during January 3 to 6, 2020. So the, dis the description of the device. So the, parts, the main parts of the device is the lift control, riser, surface plate holder, device frame, and the steel protector. For the lift control, it is made of a 12 mm diameter threaded round bar that is manually rotated. It is used to, to control the lifting of the surface plate holder and it pushes the round bar that is connected to the riser. So the riser is, is bolted in the round bar and welded at the back of the surface plate holder. It is responsible for the lifting of the surface plate, surface plate holder. So the surface plate holder is made up of mild steel where the multi-surface is attached. The steel protector it serves as a measuring device for getting the angle of friction. And the device frame serves a structural framework that, is, that holds and supports other components of the device. It is made of angle bars and square tube bases. So for the principle of operation, the multi-surface angle of friction device is used to measure the angle of friction. The operation of this device starts by ensuring that the plate is in horizontal position or in zero degree position. Then, the granular materials and biomass waste is put at the top center of the plate and the lift control is manually rotated clockwise, pushing the round bar connected to the riser to lift the surface plate holder. It is, where, it is on, the sur uh, on the surface plate holder where the different surfaces was attached. The lift holder is continu continually rotated until the materials on the surface would start to slide down. When all the sample materials have slid down, the lift control is immediately stopped. Then using the attach protractor, the angle of friction is then measured and recorded. So the material used in this, in this study were those multi-surface plates, granular materials, um, biomass waste, weighing scale, Barrow's DMC 500 moisture tester, laboratory oven, record book, labeling tags, and zipper bags. So multi-surface plates were composed of five different surfaces, namely the stainless steel surface, galvanized iron sheets, 
surface, fiberglass surface, ply plywood surface, and the concrete surface. So the granular materials is composed of corn, paddy rice, peanuts, soybean, green peas, and mung bean. So the biomass waste used was the were coconut husk, rice hull, corn cobs, and bagasse. So the weighing scale is used to measure the weight of the granular materials and biomass waste. Barrels DMC 500 moisture tester was used to determine the moisture content of the granular materials. Um, the laboratory oven was used to measure the determine the angle, uh, the moisture content of the biomass waste. Um, the record book was used to record all the gathered data. The labeling tags used to label the samples for the testing of the device. And the zipper bags was used to store the samples. So in the preparation of the samples, the granular, use, the granular materials used in the testing were obtained from Iloilo Central Market and the biomass waste were obtained from Dumangas, Iloilo. So, actual testing of the device. So, before the testing, 100 grams of each granular materials and biomass waste were weighed in order to have a precise data. To test the device developed, it was performed for the six agricultural crops and four biomass waste. It was tested in five different structure, structural surfaces and each surfaces underwent five trials. So, for the determination of the moisture content, after the testing, moisture content was determined using the Barrels DMC 500 moisture tester in granular materials and by oven dry method, the biomass waste were subjected to 24-hour oven drying at 103 degrees Celsius. So this is the figures shows the actual testing of the device. Results. So this table presents the angle of friction of different granular materials on different surfaces. So the powdery rice with 11.6% moisture content has the higher angle of friction in ply surface with 41.4, while the corn with moisture content of 11, 17.4% has a higher angle of friction in concrete surface with the value of 34.6 percent uh, degrees. The peanut with 6.8 moisture content was higher in plywood in concrete surface with 25.6 degrees. Soybean with 13.6 percent moisture content was highest in the plywood surface with 17.6 degrees. Green peas with 11.2 degree percent moisture content. Were, ha, were was highest in the concrete surface with 20.6 degrees and same as the mung bean with 9.4% moisture is highest in the concrete surface with 22.6 degrees angle of friction. So this is the graphical presentation of angle of friction of granular materials on different surfaces. It shows that the powdery rice is higher is the high, has highest angle of friction in the plywood surface due to its due to the abrasive textures of both materials and the uh, and uh, the the and the mung bean soybean green peas and 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 the three and that three is the has lowest Angle of friction because because of its round texture and so smooth texture, round shape and smooth texture rather. So this table shows the angle of friction of biomass waste on different surfaces. So the biomass waste used were rice hull, bagas, corn cobs, and coconut husk. The rice hull with zero percent moisture content is higher in the concrete surface with that obtained 50.4 degrees angle of friction, while bagasse has 5.76 moisture content, obtained its highest angle of friction in concrete with 47.2 degrees, and the corn cobs obtained 
uh, with 4.08 moisture content obtained its highest angle of fission in a plywood surface with 27.6 deg degrees and the coconut has with 3.33% obtained its highest angle of friction in the concrete surface with 48.6 degree angle of friction. So this is the graphical presentation of the angle of friction of biomass waste on different surfaces. So the only available data for comparison of the accuracy of this multi-surface angle of friction device was a study of Chung and Lee. And in this study of Chung and Lee, the given values were the coefficient of friction. But since the coefficient of friction is the tangent of angle of friction, therefore, angle of friction is the arc tangent of the coefficient of friction. So when computed, the values agrees with this study. And in the actual testing, the measured angle of friction of paddy rice over stainless steel and concrete agrees with these values. So in the actual testing, it shows that the stainless steel obtained 22.4 degrees. In, and in, Chung and, in the study of Chung and Lee, it obtained 22.3 degrees. In, in the concrete, in the actual testing, 27.4 degrees were obtained. And in the study of Chung and Lee, 27, same and it is the same in the study of, the, of Chung and Lee, which, which is 27.4 degrees. So the summary of the results. The angle of friction depends on the structural surfaces in contact with the granular materials and biomass waste. The, higher the, the highest value of angle of friction for most materials and biomass waste were obtained in concrete surface due to its roughness. And the angle of friction of the granular materials and biomass waste were the same in the two surfaces, namely stainless steel and galvanized iron sheet, due to the same characteristics of the materials. So the conclusion. For the conclusion, the device can measure the different angle of friction and was reliable since it obtained the same values with other study. So... Next is the texture can greatly affect the angle of friction because a lesser fr friction will be obtained if the material and surface were both smooth texture. On the other hand, greater fri friction will be produced if the material and surface are both rough. So in, next is the angle of friction is essential in the designing of the facilities and equipment. And structural surfaces uh, in order to maintain its quality, to extend machine usability, and to minis minimize losses. So structural surfaces affect the angle of friction because it is a factor to consider in the design of facilities for material handling, processing, and storage. For the recommendation, vibration of the device must be reduced in order to have a more accurate data. And testing of other granular materials and biomass waste to gather more data since the study was only limited to six granular materials and four biomass waste. Testing of the granular materials and biomass waste in, order, in other structural surfaces like asphalt, clear glass, rubber, and jute. And testing of granular materials and biomass waste at different moisture content. So that is the end of my presentation. Thank you and God bless us all. Thank you, Carl, for developing a laboratory device for the angle of friction of materials. Noon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I like the idea of uh, using this because I can relate how this would be applied later on. Yes, sir. But on the results, I'm just curious when you comparing it to Chong and Lee study. Yes, sir. We should, you did not include the moisture content yes, sir. in compa a comparison to your... Because, sir, it is not stated in the, ano, in the study, the moisture content. So, I assume that... I not assume. I, and, the, ano, and the angle of friction is the same, so I compared it. Uh, you just assume that it would have the same... Yes, sir. Uh, storage. So for storage, ano, sir. Purpose. So it's quality. quality. Yes, because uh, if you could see there that you have a paddy rise of 11% moisture. Yes, sir. For storage. If, 
if this is an application in a rice thresher, would this be the same? Ano, yes, sir. Ano? If this is applied to a rice, wet powder rice, would it be the same? I know, sir. Because the higher the moisture, con uh, moisture content, the higher the angle of friction. Because it is heavy, heavier to, to, slide, to slide down, sir. Okay. Because this is, uh, your 11% is uh, usually not normal uh, moisture content for rice. Because for this storage. is not... For storage, 11. Yes, sir, I don't know what farmer 14, would really do 11 percent storage. <laughs> it's uh, very low moisture already for uh, typical ice. rice. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, a while ago, I think uh, the one who presented the study on the uh, oyster shell, oyster shell yes, no, have the problem of uh, getting all of uh, the powder to slide yes, down. No. Um, which which ones uh, comes ahead? The that study on oyster powder or your study? Her study, sir. Ah, that's why. Uh, yes, sir. Had you have completed your study earlier, <laughs> she could have used uh, your findings uh, as input to her design. Yes, right, sir. No? So, uh, even with other machines, right, I, I think the, uh, uh, the practical application of the study is on the discharge, discharge. Uh, shoot. And hoppers. Oh, okay. Or maybe you can also use this um, in the design of, um, um, ano sa San Carlos? Ang gravity uh, solid waste, uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, um, Conveyor. Conveyor, uh, right? Yes, uh -huh. The gravity conveyor. Uh -huh. So you don't need any more to have a, a machine to convey the the solid waste. But given this, they can use, uh, they can make uh, and check um, up to what angle. Yes, sir. Uh, they would have. Yes, Can you design also beds with the, using this principle? Can you also design beds? Beds? Uh, for sleeping? Yes, sir. Actually, it is, it is used in medical, ano, medical field in the inclination of their beds when of the patient. Automatic line. You don't have any more to get up. All you have to do is slide <laughs> your bed and then you get down. <laughs> Must lead down. Okay. Okay na, sir. Sige. So, thank you, girl. Thank you. And congratulations also. So, let's proceed to the 10th presenter. Her study is entitled Design, Publication, and Evaluation of a Prototype Multi-Commodity Food Smoker by Jasmine Iliana Gallego. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jasmine Iliana Gallego, and I am about to present to you my study entitled Design, Fabrication, and Performance Evaluation of a Prototype Multi-Commodity Food Smoker. Food preservation slows down and prevents the growth of bacteria and fungi and microorganisms in food. It helps prevent spoilage, loss of quality, and, and edibility of food for an extended period of time. Food preservation is important because it extends the shelf life of food and ensures food safety and security. The Philippines is one of the top fish producing countries in the world. 
the total volume of fisheries production in the Philippines in 2015 reached 4.65 million metric tons. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, total of about 4,958 metric tons, or nearly 5 million kilograms of meat was produced in 2016. Fish, chicken, and pork are a highly perishable food product that requires proper handling, processing, and distribution. Processing and preservation must be applied as early as possible because food begins to spoil soon after harvest or slaughter. Food can be preserved in many ways, and one of the oldest food preservation techniques is smoking. Smoking is an ancient method of preservation where food is exposed in an enclosed area filled with smoke from burning wood or other kinds of fuel. Smoking helps extend the shelf life of food where it can minimize post-harvest losses and also smoke can add flavor to the food making it more appetizing to eat. The objectives of my study is to design, fabricate, and evaluate the prototype multi-commodity food smoker. And its specific objectives are, first, to analyze the operating capacity and person shrinkage, to determine the operating time and fuel consumption rate, third, to compute the heat utilization efficiency, fourth, calculate the moisture content of the fuel, and lastly, to analyze the operating costs. Significance of the study. The, the study will benefit the farmers and fishermen This will help them to preserve and store their catch when their harvest is abundant and it may be also their source of income. For the community, this will also preserve their food during oversupply of resources. And for the students, this will help them gain knowledge and information about the benefits of the device and how it is operated. For the researchers, it can be their basis for their future researches and the study can be further developed and improved. Time and place of the study. The planning and designing stage was done from April to May 2019, and the fabrication of the machine was done from June to July 2019 in Mala Iloilo City, and the machine pre-testing was done last August 2019 at Appropriate Technology Center, Central Philippine University, and the final performance evaluation was done last October 29. 2019 to November 12, 2019 at the Appropriate Technology Center, Central Philippine University. Description of the machine. The machine is composed of the following parts. The main frame it serves as the framework of the food smoker. The smoking chamber is where the smoking process takes place. The door with side the side glass used to monitor the product easily. Remo removable furnace is the source of the heat and smoke. Air regulator is used to supply air to the furnace and the chimney is provided to let the exhaust smoke leave the smoking chamber. And the smoking regulator is a sliding cover to regulate the smoke leaving the chimney. The removable racks, composed of two layers where the samples are placed. Perforated sheet is used to, to distribute heat and smoke equally to the smoking chamber. And that's all. <laughs> Principle of operation. The fuel used in the, in the operation is the combination of charcoal, cut coconut husk, and crushed sterilized coconut shell. The operation begins when the ignited charcoal and drained coconut husk and sterilized coconut shell were fed at the furnace and smoke started to build up. The machine is then preheated to its desired temperature before loading the samples where which were milk fish, chicken breast, and pork chop. The heat and smoke from the furnace slowly cook the meat inside the smoking chamber. A chimney is provided to let the exhaust smoke leave the smoking chamber and a smoke regulator to regulate the smoke coming out of the chimney. And an air regulator was adjusted to supply natural, natural air flow in the furnace to further ignite the charcoal and supply heat in the smoking chamber. The heat in the furnace was sustained by adding coconut husk and sterilized coconut shell, especially if little amount was left in the first feeding of fuel, to further supply smoke in the smoking chamber until the samples were cooked to its desired color.
materials used were the weighing scales, digital timer, vernier caliper, knife, claw hammer, thermostat, zipper bag, oven, data sheet, and ergonoleptic questionnaires. Methodology, preparation of samples and fuels subjecting to smoking, organoleptic analysis, and laboratory analysis. Preparation of samples. The samples used were milk fish, chicken, breast, and pork chop. They are cut to uniform thickness. The milk fish was split into half, and the chicken and pork chop were, were, were cut. They are soaked to a brine solution for 46 hours, drained, then patted dry to lessen the moisture. They are weighed to determine the operating capacity. The fuel used in the, is the combination of charcoal, coconut husk, and coconut shells. Coconut husks are uniformly cut, and the sterilized coconut shell were crushed for them to fit in the removable furnace. The cut coconut husk and, cu and crushed coconut shell were weighed before it was soaked separately in a pail of water for one to three hours, then disinfected by submerging them in a boiling water for 10 to 15 minutes. And then, after draining, the co and then drained for one hour. After draining, the coconut husk and coconut shell were weighed separately, and also the charcoal was weighed before igniting it to determine the fuel consumption rate of the machine. Subjecting to smoking. The samples were subjected to smoking where the temperature is ranges from 60 to 90 degrees Celsius. Laboratory analysis. 200 grams of coconut husk and shell were collected in each trial and were subjected to 24 hours oven drying at 103 degrees Celsius to determine the moisture content. For the organoleptic analysis, smoke product was evaluated in terms of flavor, texture, odor, color, and general taste. Questionnaires were prepared and given to 10 random people, age ranging 19 to 52 years old, that were asked to that were asked to taste the smoke product and rated it to 1 to 5, where 5 is the highest and 1 is the lowest. Performance Evaluation Machine underwent a total of 9 trials, 3 trials for each commodity, where the efficiency of the machine was based on its operating capacity, person shrinkage of the samples, operating time, fuel consumption rate, and heat utilization efficiency. Machine was evaluated using biomass fuels that comprised of coconut husk, coconut shell, and charcoal. The machine was first preheated to 60 degrees Celsius before loading the samples. Samples were uniformly placed in two removable rocks to evenly distribute the heat and smoke, and in between the smoking operation, the rocks were interchanged. The smoking process operates at two temperatures. First, 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, where to kill the microorganisms, 70 to 90 degrees Celsius to cook the samples. Cooking time for fish lasts for one hour and for chicken and pork is 30 minutes. The samples were then tempered until the temperature of the smoking chamber reaches 50 degrees Celsius to further allow slow cooking and in order to lower its moisture. The final weight of the sample was then measured to determine its person shrinkage. The unused fuel and remaining fuel in the furnace were weighed after the, opera after the operation to determine the fuel consumption rate of the machine. Results, the operating capacity and person shrinkage. The operating capacity of the machine for milkfish is 0 0.990 kg per load, for chicken breast is 1.021, for pork chop is 0 0.851. For the person shrinkage, the milkfish had a person shrinkage of 31.82%, chicken breast 29.58, and for pork chop is 37.37%. This, this is the graphical representation of the person shrinkage, which shows that pork had the highest person shrinkage due, due to its collagen content, where it denatures at 60 degrees Celsius release, that releases juices containing water. Operating time and fuel consumption rate. The operating time is composed of the preheating time, smoking time, and tempering time, which, which resulted to the 1.99 hour for milkfish, 1.84 hour for chicken breast, and for pork chop is 1.66 hour. 
For the fuel consumption rate, for smoking milk fish is 0.61 kg per hour. For the chicken breast is 0.71 kg per hour and the pork chop is 0.63 kg per hour. This is a graphical representation of fuel consumption rate where it shows that the chicken breast had the highest fuel consumption rate due to the ambient temperature where the rise of heat of the temperature in the smoking chamber is lower. Heat utilization efficiency. The heat utilization efficiency was for the milk for smoking milk fish is 12.53%, for the chicken breast is 13.15% and pork chop is 16 to 25%. For the moisture content of fuel for coconut husk, the moisture content for smoking milk fish for coconut husk is 67.5%, for chicken breast is 72.5 and for pork chop is 72.5%. For coconut shell, it has a moisture content for of 45%, for chicken breast is 48.34, and for pork chop is 36.17%. Organoleptic test. Milk fish had an average score of 3.66%, chicken breast of 3.52%, and pork chop having an average of 4.31%. And these scores are above average where it resulted that the product from the, smoke, the food smoker is acceptable. For the operating cost, the investment cost of the machine is 25000 and the fixed cost comprised of depreciation, interest in investment, repair and maintenance, insurance had a, had a total of 28.08, and variable cost consists of labor, fuel, and power consumption with a total of 246.52, the total of 274.60, and dividing it with the operating capacity for the milk fish, having 138.69, and for the chicken breast is 134.48, and pork chop 161.34. Summary of results. Conclusion, the operating capacity the operating capacity of the machine, it can accommodate milk fish of, ab of about 0.990 kg per load, of chicken breast, 1.021 kg per load, and pork chop is equal to 0.851 kg per load. The percent shrinkage is, ranges from 29 to 59 to 37.37%. The, operate, the operating time for smoking three commodities is approximately two hours. And for the fuel consumption rate is for the milk fish is 0.61 kg per hour, chicken breast is 0.71 kg per hour, and pork chop is 0.63 kg per hour. For the, each, for, the, for the heat utilization efficiency, it ranges from 12.53 to 16.25% only due to the heat losses during the operation. Moisture content of coconut husk ranges from 65.5%. 67.5 to 72.5 percent for coconut shell is 36.17 to 48.34 percent and for the operating cost for milk fish is 138.69 peso per operation chicken breast is 134.48 peso per operation and pork chop is 161.34 peso per operation for the recommendations, the edges of the door must be sealed with heat-resistant materials and the insulation of the machine in between the walls must be modified with materials having low thermal conductivity to minimize heat losses during operation. The machine should be equipped with a drip pan to catch the liquid leaking from the steam building up inside the smoking chamber. The shape of the machine can be modified to a cylindrical structure to further improve the circulation of heat and smoke during the smoking process and also to lessen the rate of heat transfer. The machine should have a dome-shaped roof with a chimney at the center to have equal distribution of heat and smoke. Thank you. Thank you, Jess, and also for donating your <laughs> smoker to the department for laboratory use. And also for others who presented. How long did you um, conduct the test? The test for each commodity, sir? For all. For all. Um, from October 
29 to November 12, sir. Just the testing? The actual testing, yeah. Testing. So about uh, 13 days? Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> How many, how many hours per day did you use? Um, um, I conducted the, the, for the milkfish, two, two trials per day, and sometimes I conducted three trials per day. Sir. Uh, for the fuel wood, how did you select the coconut husk and other like other fuel woods that's available also? Have you tried other fuel woods? No, sir. For other because uh, I know that it would uh, depend on the fuel wood for the flavor of the smokeness of the. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I used coconut husk and coconut shell because I, because it is the available and it can also be used as fuel because it has a high calorific, uh, high calorific value comparable to certain wood species. Um, what is the combination? Of the fuel, sir? Of the sir? three. Combination of? Charcoal, coconut husk, and, and coconut, uh, shell. coconut shell. What is the combination? Don't, what proportion? Uh, proportion um, I don't have a combination sir I just only weigh the 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 charcoal um, and also weigh the coconut husk and coconut shell so um, I just got I just get the average of the fuel consumed of yeah how, how many kilograms of charcoal did you use how many kilograms of uh, 700 hash? kilograms of charcoal sir and a kilogram 700 grams of charcoal then i i weighed 750 grams of coconut shell and 250 grams of 250 grams of coconut husk that's for all that's for per operation for every trial for every trial so you said you don't know of the <laughs> proportion. That's your proportion. Yes, sir. Right? I just thought that maybe um, you just uh, pick, uh, grab a number uh, of charcoal pieces of... So um, it has to be precise. In other uh, words, uh, you did some precise measurement. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And then you mix it. Ah, uh, so, okay. yes, sir. Um, going back to the question of RC, uh, why did you use uh, rice, uh, coconut shell and coconut husk and um, a particular charcoal? You see charcoals are coming from trees also. Do you know where the, what, what kind of tree did you use to prepare charcoal? <laughs> no, sir. I just bought it to some local market. Uh, have you not done some readings that uh, there are specific trees? that the ham makers yes, sir. Uh, are using you know, yes, sir. so that the quality of their smoke uh, products because no? i read some i read some studies sir that they also use uh, that biomass waste can be used as fuel for smoking yeah, there's no problem about biomass but this should ah. be specific and based on uh, your readings no um, maybe no doubt that they can be used as fuel yes no? sir for cooking or boiling, but we are using something for smoking. Yes, no? sir. Because uh, the quality of smoke uh, would be different, no, if you are using the different kinds of uh, of fuels. Yes, no? sir. Basya kon mas manamit ng butangan mo to, for example, marijuana ang imong para nami ang sulod yung smoke, no. Basya mo recommended. Tingin mo yan, nagpalagpat ka lang yan. Maski 
katungod nga pwede siyang uh, fuel, no? Pwede na siya magamit as a uh, as a uh, smoking as flavoring materials for your smoke product. Yes. Mm. Labo yung sample bayabas pala. Ah, uh, gumanang labanan ginapabutang ginagamit nila mo. Ah, uh, bayabas. Iyak uh, guaba. No? Okay. Now, with the same recommendations with the uh, that uh, dried uh, fruits and vegetables in your org organoleptic test you could have also included no yes, uh, the a sample of the commercially available uh, smoke products yes sir no para ma compare mo kung ang imong uh, produkto comparable man sa what is commercially available basi okay, mas manamit pang imo iya no? yes sir okay sir uh, and also, uh, na observe nyo ang shelf life? No, sir. But uh, I tried to test the shelf life. But because of certain factors, sir, like the packaging, because if if you package, uh, it is prone to molds because it will, it, it's prone to molds, sir. And also the storage facility and the ambient temperature. Actually, I, 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 I throw that question because oh, uh, in follow up with the, ano ni doctor, kasi ang, ang the, the the material used actually plays a big role uh, in the quality and for and the taste. In, yes, uh, sir. Uh, so try to maybe some other research can do that also. No? Yes, sir. Different fuels. Yes, uh, on the testing of uh, chicken, how do you measure the temperature? The temperature? Uh, using thermostat, sir. Thermostat. But you didn't try to check on the internal temperature yes, of the breast uh, chicken during cooking. No, if you sir. Urge, I don't. Uh, I think it would be also good to suggest that you check the, the internal temperature uh, yes, of the chicken of because the of the meat, because of uh, for uh, food safety issues. Yes, sir. It's Jasmine, you recommended uh, the use of a drip pan. Yes, sir. Uh, to catch the liquid leaking, the dripping, exactly. Yes, uh, sir. Um, but you know, if you use, if you'll uh, include a drip pan, it will affect the circulation of uh, the smoke. Yes, sir. You know? So you solve the problem of dripping, but, but you likewise create a problem of circulation of uh, smoke. Then we put ang drip ang kwan mo ang imong drip pan. Below the the rack, sir. For each rack. Mm. So no, it, for below, lang, sir. Of all the racks, sir. Ah, sa dalam dalung gin. Ah, sir. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Gin deprive mo sang smoke ang sa bottom rack. Yes, sir. Di ba? So maybe ang quality uh, sang sa sa dalung tong uh, rack, no? Okay, would sir. be different from uh, the rest of the racks if you have several racks. Yes, uh, sir. So, what's the problem? I'll change the recommendation. I don't know. But there is a procedure. Ka, no? Maybe the dripping tray can be used no? uh, for the dripping tray can be used at the end of uh, Below, the bottom. But there should be still a space to allow smoke to yes. circulate above yes, the sir. dripping pan. The sides. So, it's not so much that you can use it in your rack. Yes, sir. So, uh, in your tray, you just uh, considered a flat. Uh, yes, sir. You never uh, hung. I don't know what I mean. Is yeah, maybe it's a, it's a hanger type. Yes. But uh, yours is a flat Cut. rack. But you did not consider the 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 angle of inclination or something. Oh, sir, no. Yes, Min. Yes, I'm hello, ma'am. Ma <laughs> um, as mentioned by Dr. Uh, Dulsana a while ago, homemakers have um, a secret. They use a special wood to enhance the quality of the smoke. Yes, ma I'm thinking, I was talking to Maisil a while ago, that if we have herbs, 
uh, is it possible to include that that uh, I don't know where to put it in your machine okay. so that it's going to affect the smoke so your finished product is going to have for example if it is a ham it's going to be part of the smoke will be the scent of the uh, herbs yes ma'am it can so it is it is already uh, commercialized that we can uh, in a commercial scale they are already using lemongrass and tamarind leaves how about if I put basil if I'm going to add tarragon if I'm going to add mint will it affect or how will it affect the quality of your resulting product another research no for the only <laughs> no for the organoleptic test for the for their ano, acceptability and palatability for the person who tastes the product mm. that's exactly what i mean so yes. it's going to affect the yes. quality of the resulting meat or your ham for example so yes. you say ham for sale basil flavored <laughs> yes okay, ma thank you thank you question pa wala na sige so thank you just I'm sorry, sorry. There's uh, one last question. Okay, Actually, it's not a question, but rather a suggestion as um, suggested. Ako lang naging uh, ano, spokesperson ni Chef uh, Isuan. Uh, why not thou, in, uh, let's say for example, why not try, let's say if you use some fuel, then uh, have this cured some fuel into certain herbs or and our elements so that the smoke would also infuse with yes. the flavor Submerged of the, to the, yeah. to the um, mm -mm. So for other procedures, maybe that would serve as a challenge to other colleges because the, of course, the machine is with us at the center. So maybe other courses like CHM or even ANSI in their processing subject could go into yeah ingredients oh si ma'am si sir mans na ko na ang in charge dira kag si ma'am here <laughs> okay thank so you, thank you jazz and thank you, uh, again congratulations so from food <laughs> from food smoking no ano pa to hagina dehydration we proceed to drying so let's have the 11th presenter her study is about the design, fabrication, and performance testing of a mobile paddy dryer. So this is a unique design, no? unlike the commonly available flatbed dryer found in communities. So let's have Nestle Arcos. So good afternoon, everyone. I am Nestle Arcos, and my study was design, fabrication, and performance testing of a mobile paddy dryer. Uh, drying is the process of removing moisture to prevent activities of microorganism for efficient storage or to reduce the bulk weight for easy transportation. Moreover, when farmers do not have adequate information or training on the proper crop harvesting and handling methods, it results in significant damage to the crop. In minimizing grain post-harvest losses, drying can classify into sun drying and mechanical drying. Uh, the conventional drying system to preserve agricultural crops is sun drying, methods of spreading wet grain on the ground, turning it from time to time to remove extra moisture. But for large scale, the sun drying have various known limitation, but as damage to crops by animals, birds, and rodents, degradation in the quality of the product due to exposure of solar radiation, dew, or rain, contamination by dirt, dust, and debris. Also, it is labor and time intensive. There is also a chance of insect, insect infestation and growth of microorganisms due to non-uniform uniform drying. So the mechanical dryer used to remove water from wet grains by forcing either ambient air or heated air through the grain bulk, which employs high temperatures for rapid drying. So keeping in the view 
the problems faced by the farmers regarding the high moisture crops, especially if rain persists, an attempt has made by the researcher to modify a mobile paddy dryer which runs on rice husk furnace as heat source by adopting direct heating. The drying process is terminated when desired final moisture content is reached. So at harvest time, contains high moisture up to 24%. According to ERI 2004, the high, at higher grain moisture content, there is natural respiration in the grain that causes deterioration of the rice, the recommended moisture content for safe storage of body grain and seed. So for the storage for more than one year, it must be less than 9%. For 8 to 12 months storage, it ranges from 9 to 13 percent. Optimum milling yield, it must be 14 percent. For the 2 to 3 weeks of storage, it must be in 14 to 18 percent. And for uh, rapid deterioration, it is more than 18 percent. So the primary objective of this study was to design, fabricate, and test the performance of the mobile, dry, mobile paddy dryer. Next is to develop low-cost mobile paddy dryer, determine the rice has consumption rate, evaluate the per performance, the final weight, operating time, drying capacity, grain temperature, moisture content and moisture content reduction per hour and also analyze the heating system efficiency heat utilization drying efficiency and the operating cost so the study is significant uh, to the rice farmers government agencies students and faculty research educational institution and community for the rice farmer it can be used to help the farmer and farmer drive their paddy that requires less operating time and easy to operate. It is most advantageous for farmers to use the mobile paddy dryer if in rainy season. It will only utilize rice husk as a fuel. For the government agencies, it, it, it will be viable tool in the mechanization and development of the rice production on the country. For the students and faculty researcher, it can provide information and result that can be used and applied in an effort to help the student to understand the principles of operation of drying, dryer systems specific to rice. This can be used as reference for future researches. For the educational institution, can be subject for evaluation for further enhancement and development. And lastly, for the community, the development of mobile paddy dryer can be utilized for accessible to all the people. Uh, next is the time and place of the study. The fabrication was March to August 2019 at Molo, Iloilo City. The initial testing was on October 2019 at Barangay Tabukan Kabatuan, Iloilo. The performance evaluation was November 28 and December 2, 2019 at Barangay Tabukan, Kabatuan, Iloilo. So the methodology is consists of the design criteria, design of the dryer, principle of operation, performance evaluation, data collected, instrument use, and the parameters analyzed. <laughs> so the construction of the dryer is made of angle bars, galvanized iron pipe, square tube, perforated sheet, gauge 16 GI sheet, and a blower with 3-inch diameter that, are, that were available on the local hardware. For the capacity of the dryer, it is determined by the weight of the paddy in the kilogram that can be dried on a given time. The manpower requirement uh, included of lifting of the bag, the bag of paddy, collecting of rice has, recording and Recording of operating time and collection of data. It can be done by two or more person. So the cost of dryer is was at thirty-five thousand pesos, and the availability of the materials. The sample 
were obtained from the newly harvested rice of the researcher and the rice husk was gathered from the nearest milling area. So for the, so for the design of the dryer, the dryer system was generally composed of the conical grate rice husk, fire furnace, the blower, air duct, drying chamber, discharge chute, and the main frame, main frame. So the conical grate rice husk fired furnace is used to provide heat for the process of combustion. The heat from burning the rice husk is utilized as the drying air to sample in the drying chamber. The air duct is provided to serve as a passageway of a drying air to drying chamber. The upper end is connected to the conical grate rice husk fired furnace, while the lower end is attached to the drying chamber. Then the blower is used to draw heat from the furnace and distribute it throughout the drying chamber. The drying chamber is a vertical bin and also batch type with fixed volume of grain holding stationary in vertical grain holding chamber and it batches until the, it reach the desired moisture content. The drying chamber is composed of four compartments. So the bottom which has inclined base with slope angle of 15 degrees and discharge opening. The second and the top compartment has three V-shaped profile passageway of drying air that is connected from the air duct to the drying chamber. The next is inside the third compartment is opposite direction V-shaped profile passageway to make the drying air uniformly distributed with two exhaust opening. So from the left to right, this is the, the discharge chute connecting in the drying chamber, the passageway of air circulation inside the drying chamber, and the drying, drying air exhaust. So for the principle of operation, the heat that was produced from the conical grate rice husk, which is the hot air, was forced by the blower to the air duct wherein the heated air passes through the mass of body inside the drying chamber until obtaining the desired moisture content. The drying chamber has a V-shaped profile passageway that helps in the air circulation an equal distribution of heated air without mixing the body in the drying chamber. Next, for the performance evaluation, the loading of body in the drying chamber and the final setup of the mobile body dryer used in the performance evaluation. During the actual test, the initial weights and grain temperature of the, sum of the body samples were taken. In every 30-minute interval, the data gathered until obtaining the desired moisture content and were based on the recommendation of Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standard or PAES. So the instrument used was weighing scale, virus DMC 500 digital moisture tester, sling psychrometer, uh, noise level meter, thermos thermostat, Canon AD 7864, the pressure, pressure gauge, the digital timer, digital camera, and the record sheet. So the parameters analyzed was the drying capacity, final weight of test materials, moisture content reduction, heating system efficiency, heat utilization, and the drying efficiency. So for the result, this, is, this was the... Summary, so drying capacity 27.8 kg per hour, final weight is 96.80 kg, moisture content reduction per hour 2.3 kg per hour, 78 for heating system efficiency 65.84, heat utilization is 24,295 kJ per kilogram and for the drying efficiency is 19.61. So this is, was the table for the operating performance of the mobile body dryer in terms of initial weight, drying capacity, operation time, and the final weight. The average drying capacity was 27.8 kg per hour, 
and average final weight was 96.80 kg. The, oper the operating time was reckoned from the burning of the rice husk upon attaining the 14% 14 mo 14 moisture content of the paddy. And it was operated in a average operating time of 3.8 hours. The presence of shocks and other impurities was also observed to affect the uniformity of the feeding paddy in the drying chamber. So next is the performance of the mobile paddy dryers in terms of the drying air temperature, grain temperature before and after heating, initial moisture content, final moisture content, and moisture reduction per hour. So it was observed that the higher the drying air temperature is proportionally increasing with grain temperature and inversely decreasing with moisture content. At the initial moisture content of 20.7 to 22.1 percent, the moisture of body after drying obtained ranges from 13.5 to 15.2 percent. The higher moisture reduction per hour of body in the dryer can be attributed to the drying process, which combines the high temperature conduction heating and forced drying air from the blower. So next is the graph representation of the moisture content versus the time. For trial one, the moisture content on the top and the middle portion were inversely decreasing as time increases. The bottom moisture content in the first 60 minutes increases due to the moisture that was transferred from the top and middle portion. It was visible in the exhaust opening of the drying chamber. For the Trial 2, the top and bottom moisture content were inversely decreasing as time increases. Also, the middle moisture content was increasing in the first 90 minutes due to the insufficient drying air and the moisture from the top portion transferred to middle. But eventually, as time increased, the moisture also decreased. So for the last trial, which is the trial 3, the middle moisture content was hard to lower down due to the moisture content in the top was high and it was all transferred to the middle, the top and bottom moisture content decreased as the time increased. So for the rice husk consumption rate of the mobile body dryer, the rice husk fuel consumption rate of conical grade rice husk fire furnace in heating the dryer chamber shown in the table an average rice husk consumed is 25.61 kg. For the milling quality of the mobile paddy dryer, the paddy dried using mobile paddy dryer has an average milling recovery of 64.7% and head rice recovery of 58%. The, hot, the not uniformly distribution of drying air, different moisture content after every turns, and over drying of the sample in the test were the factors that caused unsatisfactory quality of the milled rice. Lastly, the heating system efficiency, heat utilization, and drying efficiency of mobile paddy dryer. Heating system efficiency was computed to have an average of 65.84%. The average heat utilization was 24,295 kJ per kilogram. Based on the result presented, the dryer has an average drying efficiency of 19.61%. This implies that the dryer utilizes only as much as 19.61% of heat available for, from rice husk in removing moisture from the body. Since the dryer employs high temperature conduction drying process, a, lo a lower drying efficiency for the dryer was expected. The results obtained were bas basically at the range of those vertical airflow batch dryers. So the operating cost was 1.61 pesos per kilogram. So conclusion, the dryer is mobile and low cost. The dryer has an average drying capacity of 27.8 kilogram and can dry paddy at an average operating time of 3.8, reducing the moisture content of the grains from 22.1 to 13.5. The mobile paddy dryer has an average rice oil consumption rate of 25.61 kg per hour. The heating system efficiency in heat utilization was computed to be 65.84 and 
1,295 kilojoules per kilogram. The mobile paddy dryer has efficiency of 19.61 and the results obtained were basically at the range of those vertical airflow batch dryer. The dryer can be fabricated at cost of 35,000 and the dryer entails an operating cost of 1.61 pesos for every kilogram of paddy to be dried. So for the recommendation, the drying chamber is highly recommended to be cylindrical in, the, in order to reduce losses and accumulation of the paddy on the edges. The air duct can be designed as galvanized iron pipe to reduce heat losses. The airflow geometry can be designed to a new geometry that can increase the drying uniformity. The sharp edges and projecting materials must be eliminated to keep away from accidents and safe operation, especially in the discharge chute. An ash pan can be provided for easy collection of the carbonized rice husk, and the inclinational base of the drying chamber can be increased up to 36.5 degree standard angle for friction of the rice. Uh, so thank you, that was all right. <laughs> Thank you, Wang. So uh, let's wait for the questions from our. So we have Sir Arce. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon uh, I like the sir. idea of having a mobile uh, rice dryer even in my farm because I'm a rice farmer also. Yes, and uh, that's only one question because you relate your drying to milling. Yes, sir. Recovery and head rise. Uh, how did you, uh, again, uh, refer that to, how did you uh, relate that to the meal, uh, to the drying process? So I get, sir, the 500 uh, grams for every trial, probably get 500 grams. Then I milk it. Then uh, I manually count the head rise. Uh, so for the milling recovery, uh, the head rice recovery was the three fourths of the three fourth of the mill rice. The milling recovery, I count the the broken rice and the the paddy that was uh, that uh, the mill rice and the uh, head rice recovery was three fourths and the uh, the broken rice, I count the broken rice percent, then minus in the milled rice of the paddy. Okay. Uh, did you account also the rice variety that you're milling in the uh, No, sir. Because I think it would also, rice variety depends on their milling recovery. Yes. Sir. Would depend on the rice variety. Uh, have you do make, uh, documented also what rice variety did you dry? I suggest that you also document it. So okay, that it sir. can be later on, if there's another research, could be referred to. Uh, I suggest that you put the rice variety. Okay, sir. I dryer. just put in my... Because, uh, you know, there's a very many rice variety in oh, the Philippines and has a different uh, characteristic, which is also includes the rice recovery. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have you compared your result with uh, uh, the result of commercially available uh, palai uh, Based on the answer, the commercially vertical mixed flow air dryer is for the inter industrial use, which is for the big, it's just for the small scale. And the data for the vertical mixed flow air dryer that is industrialized was higher and cannot be comparable with the small, small scale? For example, um, instead of um, uh, buying you know, your equipment, I would have my um, newly dressed ally uh, submit that for drying to uh, uh, commercial dryers. Do you know the the cost of drying for custom drying per bag in a commercial no sir i think um, maybe uh, most the highest would be 35 pesos per, per bag per bag right now if you compute your uh, cost 
per kilogram, it would be about uh, 64 pesos yes, per bag. Twice. Yeah, in a 40 kilogram uh, uh, bag. So that's a lot, you know, to if you think of uh, the cost alone. So instead of buying your your uh, equipment, I would rather have uh, my um, palai, you no, know, uh, subject to custom drying and just pay. So can there be a way of reducing this uh, uh, cost? Maybe uh, the the oper the it can maybe lessen in the variable cost of the uh, of operating the machine. There would be other factors, but maybe um, um, one factor that you have also to consider, other than the cost, is the capacity of your uh, machine. The bigger the capacity. Um, the dilution of your cost yes, uh, sir. would be likewise uh, affected. Uh, so actually, I think this is one factor, right? The dryer, the mobile paddy dryer, sir, can be constructed. Uh, it can be constructed uh, another compartments and to be added vertically. Upward. Precisely, given the fact also yes, that uh, there's an excess heat produced yes, from the furnace. So this would allow maybe another layer to uh, increase the capacity and consequently reduce the cost of uh, milling or, or yes, other drying. No? Yes, so um, if you notice right now, um, the, the cost, I mean, the, 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 the amount of fuel that you'll be using is basically the same amount of palai that you'll be drying. Yes, it's a, a one is to one. Uh, ratio right um, because you have about 27 kilograms of uh, palai mm. and you have 25 kilograms of uh, rice hull per hour right yes so it's like a one is to one if you are going to meal at uh, to dry 100 uh, bags of palai no more or less you have to have around uh, also 100 bags of uh, Rice hull ready. Right. Yes, sir. For the purpose of project study, I only made uh, four compartments so that uh, I can get the performance evaluation and if the mobile paddy dryer was uh, significant for drying, uh, drying the paddy until obtaining a 14% moisture but, content. But based on your data, you can make some con configuration uh, on how you can reduce the cost, you know, uh, by increasing I can the capacity. To put yeah. Another compartment. Yeah. So that can be a part of your recommendation. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, follow up recommendation also. Uh, yes, sir. Also, how much is the capacity right now of that compartment per day in kilos? It is 27.8 kilogram per hour. It but is for the, the whole... Capacity uh, means how many kilos can we put uh, paddy uh, rice in there? In 130, uh, 135 kilogram of, rice, of paddy rice. Yes, therefore if I am one hectare and producing three tons, how many compartment do I need? Oh, there yes. should be uh, also be checked because if you're selling it to a farmer, you should yes, also sir. check that uh -uh. if it's uh, pr uh, producing one hectare, would it be uh, uh, some valuable for him to uh, to buy that if you have uh, produced uh, three tons of paddy rice? Yes, sir. Noted. Thank you. Sige, I have a question. So, um, your design, of course, no, made use of a different um, yes, uh, approach, right? Uh, the vertical flow. So, you think it's? I mean, could you explain to us the practicality? No, because you just you mentioned you only did the pilato layer, 
just three. two. Ah, uh, four, four. But I'm sure there is the, there is a reason behind why you stuck to the pilato 135 uh, yeah uh, kilogram capacity. So if I am to adopt the technology, you think it's practical for a household user or even for a small scale farmer or for a small farmers association to adopt that kind of technology versus the prevail the the prevalent uh, flatbed dryers you know, being uh, adopted by the many farmers mm -hmm. right now. Uh, yes, ma'am, because the mobile paddy dryer can be added uh, some compartments, then uh, you will only utilize rice husk and uh, for uh, operating time of 3.8 hours, it can dry the paddy. But for the flatbed dryer, um, uh, others, uh, because it is not uniformly, uniformly distributed of the drying air, other um, um, turn the rice, uh, the paddy rice. So in the mobile paddy, mobile paddy dryer, without mixing the the paddy, the it cannot affect the the uniformity of the I uh, know uniformity of the drying air, but but. Uh, it must be have a new ge geometry of V-shaped profile that is that is uh, suitable for the drying capacity of more than uh, tons. So in short, the highlight of your design is you're able to lower down the drying time. Yes, which is more or less how many percent down compared to the actual. I uh, so. In the you say the flatbed, ha? Flatbed lang surenta. So the flatbed dryer, uh, it is from uh, eight hours or like others is twenty four hours for the capacity of the. Uh, it is, uh, ano na? Um, depends on the capacity of the paddy dryer that is uh, dry can be dried in a flatbed dryer. But if you have. Um, capacity of 135 or more you can use the mobile paddy dryer but you have just the need put another new compartment uh -oh. so that is what dr dosaran said the challenge now is to compute more or less the most economical ano siguro, capacity given that you're able to lower down the drying Thank time yes ma'am thank naman. you uh miss nestle I only have some one question, one query. Is your drying chamber is insulated? Siya, hindi? No, no, uh, sir. So better, siguro, in the, uh -oh, you have sir. to include in your recommendation. That's yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you, Wang. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations. Okay, let's proceed to another study. This time, it's about pumps. So the title is Field Performance Evaluation of a 38 HP Pump Irrigation System Project for Manhayang Irrigate Association located in Barangay no. Manhayang, Santa Barbara, Iloilo by Ara K. Argelius. Hello. So to our audiences, to, our, to my co-presenters, and to the respected panel of judges, I am Araki Argelius, the proud proponent of the study entitled Field Performance Evaluation of a 38 Horsepower Pump Irrigation System Project for Manhayang Irrigators Association located in Barangay Manhayang, Santa Barbara, Iloilo. So for the, for the introduction, So, irrigation system. Different irrigation systems are widely used to help agricultural crop growth, maintain landscape, and reduce the effect of inadequate rain rainfall, among others. So, to keep productivity high and stay competitive in the market, farmer needs to, farmers need to focus on profitability, which includes energy optimization 
and better use of water resources. So according to Bagdasarian 2013, about 35% to 60% of the supplied volume is wasted due to pipe leakages. So most of pipeline networks are exposed to mechanical stress and soil corrosion. And to achieve a high level of irrigation performance, it requires a well-designed, well-maintained, and well-managed water distribution system. So for this reason, it was proposed to evaluate the field performance of the 38 horsepower pump irrigation system installed for Manhayang Irrigators Association in Barangay Manhayang, Santa Barbara, Iloilo to determine the current state of the irrigation project installed back in 2018. So the objectives of this study is, the general objective is to evaluate the field performance of the installed 38 horsepower pump irrigation system project in Barangay Manhayang, Santa Barbara, Iloilo. So the specific objectives first is to analyze the pump performance, performance curves to the actual field condition. Second is to determine and compute the volume flow rate, total dynamic head, and horsepower requirement of the system based on the plan and actual field condition. And lastly is to analyze the design of the irrigation system project by comparing the actual data collected and the information gathered from the plan. So for the significance of the study, this study will be beneficial to the following. First is for the farmers. So the use of 38 horsepower pump irrigation system can result to significant long-term cost savings, productivity increases in, time of, in times of needs when there is no available water, thus would result to higher productivity. Second is to the environment. This pump, this pump system utilizes water resources effectively and also to the community. The water will be uh, utilized for their farm operations and household as supplemental water and other applications. And lastly is for the government agencies. The methodology in evaluating the installed pump system and the result of the evaluation would help agencies like the Department of Agriculture assess the operational quality of the installed project. So for the time and place of the study, the, the system was installed through the Department of Agriculture at Barangay Manhayang, Santa Barbara, Iloilo. As what I have said a while ago, it was, it was installed la last uh, 2018. Next is pre-testing of the system was conducted last October 2019. And during this phase, it was observed that um, the foot valve was detached from the system the inlet structure was uh, filled with the uh, soil sediments due to, due to the wooden plank was removed from the inlet structure and also the starter key was not functioning. So pre-testing pre was, <clears throat> was done to, to ensure that uh, every component parts of the system are functional. And lastly, the actual field Performance evaluation of the study was conducted last November 30, 2019. So the description of the project area, the 38 horsepower pump is used as supplemental, supple, supplemental water for both residential and farm sector. It is made up of inlet structure, the foot valve, PVC pipe, check valve, centrifugal pump, engine system, cooling tank, and line canal. So for the next slide, I will explain to you the purpose of each component. So for the cooling tank, it, sir, it prevents the overheating of the engine because it stores the water which uh, cools the engine and the centrifugal pump leaves water after priming and it is a flange type bulb and non-self priming and the 38 HP diesel engine is uh, serves as the power source of the whole system the fuel tank which serves as a storage of the of the uh, diesel gas and the check valve which prevents the backflow of the water 
So for the suction part, the PVC pipe which uh, guides the water, and the inlet and the PVC pipe is six inch diameter. The inlet structure which impounds the water from our reservoir, which is the Tigom River. So for the principle of operation, so the arrow represents the flow of water from the reservoir up to the discharge canal. So the entire system operates through the use of centrifugal pump powered by a 38 HP diesel engine. So centrifugal pump is a machine that uses rotation to impart velocity to a liquid. It then convert that velocity into flow. So since we, since the setup uh, centrifugal pump is non-self priming, it needs to be primed before it will operate. So priming a centrifugal pump is essential to properly function. Otherwise, the suction pressure created will not be su sufficient enough to lift water. And this can cause issues such as overheating and pipe failures. So priming is done to remove air from the pump and suction line to permit atmospheric pressure and flooding pressure to cause liquid to flow into the pump. So the operation starts from turning on the engine which provides power to the system and the mechanical energy of the driving motor which is the diesel engine transforms the mechanical energy of the moving fluid. So the impounded water and the inlet structure suctioned by a foot valve and lifted up by a centrifugal pump to a specified elevation. Then the check valve set up next to the centrifugal pump will prevent the water from backflowing and the fluid that is, is then delivered to the required distance using the pipes until it reaches the discharge area. So the performance evaluation, the project was ev evaluated in three trials at different RPM. So during the field performance evaluation, the speed of the shaft of the diesel engine expressed in Revolution per minute was measured using a digital tachometer. So then the velocity of the water coming from the reservoir, which is the Tigum River, was uh, determined using the float method. So the float method was done first by fi finding a straight portion of the canal at the distance from point A to point B, or the starting point and the end point of the float, was measured using a steel tape. So the time of the floating device in traveling from point A to point B was also measured and the depth of water discharge and the dimension of the canal was also measured using a steel tape. So here are the instruments used during the performance evaluation. The, ru the ruler, the floater which serves as the floating device, the steel tape, the timer, the marking pins which serves as the marker of point A and point B, and the tachometer, which uh, measures the speed of the shaft in a revolution per minute. So here are the data collected. So first is the static discharge head. This refers to the vertical distance from the center line of the pump to the discharge water level. Next is the static suction lift. This refers to the vertical distance from the free suction water level to the center line of the pump. Next is the distance traveled by the floating device. This refers to the starting point and end point of the water flowing during the float method test and the time. This refers to the time traveled by the floating device from point A to point B. And the area of the canal refers to the height and width of the rectangular canal and the depth of water refers to the height of the water from the bottom to the surface water. And the speed of the engine shaft refers to the operating speed of the shaft of the 38 horsepower diesel engine measured in revolution per minute. So for the results, as you can see, this resor this res um, the table represents the discharge of water in gallons per minute and in liters per second. The upper portion was in liters per second, and the average and the bottom portion was in gallons per minute. During the conduct of the study, it was uh, measured in, it was uh, computed in uh, liters per second, and then after which 
is converted into gallons per minute for me to be able to compare it to the data gathered from the municipality local government, which is the discharge is in gallons per minute. So, in three trials, the, the average for 1,650 RPM is 713.5 gallons per minute and 618.28 for 1,558 RPM, 579.11 for 1,425 RPM, 473.9 for 1,311 RPM, and lastly is for 462 for 1,290 RPM. So for the other parameters um, analyzed, the parameters are the total dynamic head, the water horsepower, the pump efficiency, and the brake horsepower, which will be used to compare to the data given from the project plan. So the total dynamic head was computed using the sum of uh, um, static suction lift and the static dynamic head, also the, all the friction losses and the it resulted into 34.2 for 160 RPM, 1,558 for, uh, 17.08 for 1,558 RPM, for 1,425 RPM is 15.4 and 11.81 and 11.37 for 1,311 and 1,290 RPM respectively. So water horsepower was determined also using the formula, the discharge, and the total dynamic head over the over 76 for for conversion, and it resulted into 20, 17 .08, 15.40, 18.11.81, 11.37 for for the different RPM respectively, and the pump efficiency was was determined using pump performance curve criteria from the so the pump efficiency yes was from the EI series pump performance curve criteria which is 67.5 63.5 59 53 percent and 51 percent respectively so the brake horsepower was computed using water horsepower divided by the efficiency which was from the graph, the pump performance curve, and the, the result shows 30, 28, 26, 22.30, 22.2 respectively. So this graph shows the relationship of the discharge and the different RPM. So as you can see, the lines are almost uh, straight because in every trial, the results are almost uh, equal. So to compare the theoretical data gathered and the actual performance of the pump, the operating speed at operating speed of 1,750 RPM based on the project on the data collected and the actual which is 1650 rpm the average discharge is 700 gallons per minute while on the actual which has only 1650 rpm has a 713.5 gallons per minute the total dynamic head for the theoretical data is 35 meters while on the actual it has 34.2 meters the efficiency of the theoretical data is 67% while on the actual, which has only 1,650 RPM, has about 67.5%. And the brake horsepower is 38 HP on the data and 30, 30 HP on the actual. So the summary of the results. So the engine obtained at the highest performance at the maximum speed of 1,000 600 RPM, so the water discharge rate was 713.12 gallons per minute at 33.2 meters total dynamic head. So the pump efficiency was 67.5% uh, obtained using the pump performance curve criteria 
and the computed brake horsepower of the system was 30, 30 HP. So in conclusion, the actual operating performance of the system satisfies the condition indicated in the project plan, which were 700 gallons per minute, discharge 35 meters total dynamic head and 67 percent pump efficiency at 1750 rpm so the existing 38 horsepower diesel engine that drives the centrifugal pump is more than the computed brake horsepower which satisfies the given horsepower from the project plan so for the recommendations First is to install pressure gauge to monitor the pressure exerted in the cylinder block. Second is to install a fuel indicator hose in the fuel tank for easy monitoring of the fuel consumption. Third is to secure a flush board of inlet structure during rainy season to prevent the entry of the soil, particles, or other fine materials which may damage the system. Lastly is the proper maintenance of the pump irrigation system by the Manhayang Irrigators Association to extend the performance operation of the machine and for the references. So, thank you. Thank you, R. Uh, thank you for this uh, presentation, especially yes, irrigation is a big part of uh, farming. And I just noticed that you never collected the uh, fuel consumption. Is that right? Yes, sir. I haven't collected the fuel consumption, sir. sir since um, it's hard to monitor, sir, cause the, um, because the fuel tank, sir, um, is, uh, ano, it has an irregular shape, so it's hard for me to, to, to perform even the deep method, sir, because the bottom of the, the bottom of the tank is also irregular, sir, because they just fabricated it. Is that hindrance to get fuel? I think you can just pour in how much liter, full tank it, then put another afterwards. You yes, don't sir. need to measure yes, sir. Uh, the I... complex uh, container of the of the machine, but also like just put how many liters there, stack up capacity, then run it, how many hours, I... then you, uh, refuel it, then how much refuel have you gone? I also th um, think of, I thought about that, sir, but but I, I, I know, sir, I, I realize that uh, I cannot uh, when when I collect uh, again the ano, sir the fuel left after the operating uh, the operation sir I think I would not be able to to collect it all since the I cannot ensure that uh, it will be it will all ano, sir um, be collected since the bottom is not uh, is in irregular in shape sir I think there there will be factors that would uh, affect also the fuel consumption because because you like the dipstick method or the container computation but the practical way yes, was sir. to fill it in full tank and the run it then refill it how much was refilled then that's the fuel um, consumption yes sir because uh, i i cannot uh, Full the tank, sir, because it has a large capacity, sir. Oh, large. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's about uh, 80 to 90 liters, sir. Ah, okay. Because I think uh, it's also valuable information, especially for the, for the former groups. Yes, sir. Because if they would share the amount of uh, fuel or how much is per liter or per gallon, uh, cost of uh, producing a gallon of water uh, or yes, a liter would be really essential for them comparing to recommending a fuel gauge there because uh, if you see if you recommend the fuel gauge then you're telling me that the shape is not uh, cannot be measured then yes, the fuel gauge would not be really a matter but uh, uh, I think uh, fuel uh, next time that would be really very important the uh, efficiency yes, in 
in the fuel cost. Nothing, Thank you. sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kay, in addition to what sir uh, is telling you is yeah, because your study is uh, field performance evaluation so yes, we are expecting that the field, uh, the fuel efficiency was included in your yes, study. Sir, uh, anyway, uh, by testing the speed, the maximum is 1,650 RPM yes, and the, uh, the minimum or the lowest is 1,200 RPM. So in this actually uh, by having this um, speed so very important yung fuel yes, consumption sir. Yes, sir. and then uh, by that um, among the five speed that you have tested so what would be your recommendation for the association to maintain on what speed they are yes, going sir. to maintain to to meet their water requirement in the service area yes sir regarding on that sir i think they can use what um whatever speed they want sir but but for me if they use it um on both residential and farm sector sir no um they can use it uh, at uh, 1650 rpm because it can already discharge more than the the the, the discharge capacity on the uh, given on the plan sir so you mean to say in 1650 rpm that the total service area can be accommodated already? I think so, sir, because uh, I believe that that the data given to me as 1750 RPM in 700 gallons per minute was uh, uh, has also in consideration regarding the water requirement on the, the total area. area. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you sure that the system is being used? Yes, sir. And I'm happy to share to you, and I'm proud to share also, sir, that the system... Look, look, just look at the video. Sir? <laughs> look at the video. Yes, there. sir. Look at that. Ah, uh, sir? If the system is being used, you will not see those uh, growth of uh, uh, plants or... Yes, sir, because um, according to the Manhayang Irrigators Association, mm. sir, ang after the installation of the project, sir, um, they were not able to, to you, use it, uh, I mean, every see, day. You see, not only maybe every day, but maybe for quite some time, yes, because sir. if but, they are using it, um, there will be no growth of those uh, materials there. Let's see, oh, look at that. May nakatubo ito, ho? O sa may kanal, ho? Diba? I think it depends on their association, sir. No, no. I mean, unobtrusively, you will know that something is used or not yes, used. Sir. Right? So that, that will make you doubt whether it is really being used by them or not. No? Now, I would agree that I, I think you should change your title. Based on yes, the sir. data that you have presented, you simply evaluated the, perf the performance of the pump. Yes, sir. Not the irrigation system. Okay, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Because you talk about irrigation system project. Yes, sir. For the, for Manhayang. But you have not presented data, for example, of the service areas. Service area. And um, whether all of these are irrigated, whether there are no complaints about some farmers that they were not able to make use of the water whether the lateral canals are um, will maintain yes sir you know, what is the operation uh, of the irrigation system who is paying uh, what are the terms uh, payment of the use yes sir also you have not made an assessment of the sufficiency of water from the source if you do continuous pumping will the source of water from the supply point be sufficient up to uh, for how long right yes sir so uh, th th those are some important uh, information or data in trying to understand the operation okay. of the whole system yes sir but given your data right now i think um, you just be contented of uh, the evaluation of the pump because yes, sir. it's all about the pump not the irrigation system. Okay, sir. I will change my title, sir. Thank you for the suggestion.
I'm also confused because there's two uh, system being used in your. I didn't get whether who's using the uh, gallons per minute ah. and the liters per minute. Who's using it? I know, sir. I um, when I conducted, sir. I get the data. I, I computed the data in liters per second, and I just converted it to gallons per minute, sir. And the reasoning for it? What's for me to be able to compare it to the given data in gallons per minute, sir. Who's the, the... theoretical? Ah, municipal local government, sir. Oh. The data was from the municip municipal local government. Mm, how the government is using a different metric system than the Philippine standard system. <laughs> <laughs> Ginagamit nila sa barangay nila, sir. It depends on, kay, based on what I have interviewed, sir, the residents, um, some some of them have a, uh, 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 the water from the irrigation system, sir, ang undergo filtration, I think. Yes. Yes, sir. Wow. But some, I think, for the minor purposes, Oh, na ko sa hindi. So what have you learned when you visited at first, no, in the area? So what I have learned is that proper evaluation of ah. Evaluation prior to installation is important also to to know what are the problems occurred after the installation of the project, especially that these projects are are the um, more important projects, especially on the earth, on agricultural sectors, ma'am. By the way, you mentioned supplemental source of water, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Is there the, a principal source of water? Um, ano sir, they they just uh, depend on uh, ano sir, ang um, rain fed rainfall. rainfall. So muna nga principal source. Yes sir. In That's why they installed lang. the large capacity irrigation system sir. Okay. Abi ko ba si kun niya irrigation, <laughs> ini niya supplemental lang ni siya. Yes sir. Uh, uh, uh. Yes sir. Okay, R, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping Manhayang Irrigators Association yes, in Sabalaga. At least nagdalaga na. Sige, let's proceed to the 13th presenter. <laughs> yes, because we visited the area and the foot valves were not uh, working during that time. Damo leak. But I'm happy that Ara was able to serve through her study. Sige. So, the 13th presenter is Trina Evangelista in the title of her study is Field Performance Evaluation of Yanmar AW7 TV Corn Combined Harvester. So, good afternoon everyone. So today, I will be presenting to you my study entitled Field Performance Evaluation of Yanmar AW7TV Corn Combined Harvester. So, introduction. Corn or maize, or scientifically known as Zaya maize, is a starchy cereal grain first cultivated in the country of Mexico. It came from the family of grasses uh, and had become a staple food in many parts of the world. In the Philippines, corn is one of the most important staple crops. It ranks second to rice in the utilization of agricultural resources. Kernels, kernels yield <coughs> a variety of colors such as red, yellow, white, or violet. Corn can be utilized as a snack and as a feed for animals. Before, corn is harvested by hand and is shelled by using hand also or by using a manual sheller which is laborious and can take a lot of time. The combined, the combined corn harvester is the answer to untimely and laborious process of harvesting corn. 
It is called a combine for it combines several several processing in one machine, which results in a faster, more efficient method of harvesting corn. Nonetheless, careful operation of the combine is needed for it encounters problems like grain losses and breakage. Furthermore, its performance is greatly managed by machine and plant factors among the machine variables are combined forward speed, feed rate, and on the other hand, the plant variables are variety, moisture content, and degree of maturity. So, the objectives of the study. Generally, this study aimed to evaluate the field performance of Yanmar AW70V corn combined harvester. Specifically, this study aimed to evaluate the performance of the machine in terms of field capacity and efficiency. Compare the operating performance of the combined harvester to the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards or PAES required losses when rated according to separation or blower loss, unshared loss, and peak loss, per percent purity kernels, percent crack kernels, um, percent mechanically broken kernels, total combined loss, and compare the harvesting cost using combined harvester and manual harvesting. Significance of the study. So this study is, will provide information about the advantages and effects of corn produ production using the machine, including the actual operating performance of these technologies. It can also significant to entrepreneurs. The, <coughs> the evaluation of this machine will promote mechanization, which can help entrepreneurs to sell a well-informed machine to their buyers. The operating cost of the machine and the manual harvesting will provide information, whether it is economical or not. To the researchers, this study will benefit future researchers as a reference and provide ideas and new information for their studies. The study was conducted in November 5, 2019 in a selected parcel of cornfield in Sitio Libuon, Rosario, Dumangas, Iloilo City. So the parts of a combined harvester. So the canopy acts as a sunshade to the operator. The shelling cylinder threshes the corn while it rotates. The concave is the one who threshes and separates the corn kernels from shafts, stalks, and other foreign materials. Cleaning fan blows the tiny residues like leaves and small stalks to separate the kernels. The crop elevator transports the harvested corn to the shelling cylinder. The reel is where the reel tines are attached to pick up the harvested corn. The header of the table, the table is where the cutter blades are attached which cuts the stalks of the corn and the kernel elevator transports the clean kernels to the grain hopper. The holding bin is where the clean kernels are stored to be bagged. So these are the specifications of the Yanmar AW70V corn combined harvester that was given that was uh, took that, that I took from the company company's catalog. So the fuel tank capacity is 90 liters. The crawler has a width and length of 500 millimeter and 1,700 millimeter. The gear shift method is HST with hydraulic side clutch. Number of transmission gears, meters per second is three. Travel speeds at rated engine speeds of meter per second for lower is 0, 0 to 0 0.93 standard is zero to 1.50, fast is 0 to 1.85. The, the, the minimum ground clearance in millimeter is 3, 327 for in the center of transmission. The header has an internal interval between divider edges, which is 2060. The header device type is real plus platform. The cut width is 1,975. So the principle of operation. So the combine 
harvester gathers corn stalks, reaps the stalks while using the cutter blade, picks the ripped corn using the real time, threshes the corn cobs using the shelling cylinder, cleans the threshed corns using the concave and the cleaning fan, and bags the clean kernel using the grain hopper. For the performance uh, evaluation, the variety of the corn that was harvested was M1400 hybrid corn. Before the operation, corn samples were gathered for the determination of the moisture content. Then the fuel tank was filled in fuel full before the operation. The machine underwent three trials. A 30 meter distance was measured and marked with long sighting poles. The time of operation was determined using digital timer. After the operation, the machine was turned off and corn samples from the main outlet and secondary outlet were collected for the determination of separation or blown loss, unshelled loss, and peak loss, purity, percent crack kernels, and mechanically broken kernels. The total combined loss was also determined. The fuel tank was also refilled using a beaker for the determination of fuel consumption. Before and after the operation, the noise level of the, com of the machine was measured using a digital noise level meter. For the laboratory analysis of corn samples, the moisture content of the collected corn samples were determined by using a digital grain moisture meter. Separation loss was determined by collecting the kernels from the secondary outlet that was mixed with the corn cobs and shafts. It was then clean and weighed. Shunshelled loss was determined by collecting unshelled corn kernels from the secondary outlet, then was manually shelled and weighed. Unpicked loss was determined by randomly picking a 3-meter plot from each trial and collected the unpicked corn cobs, then was manually shelled and weighed. Percent of crack kernels was determined by getting 100 kernels from manually shelled and mechanically shelled kernels that was inspected for the presence of fissures. In determining the percent mechanically damaged kernels, 100 grams samples from the main outlet that was collected and separated the crushed or broken kernels and then was weighed. Percent purity was determined by collecting 500 grams of corn samples from the main outlet, separated from any foreign matter, and then weighed. Total combined loss was also determined by adding all the combined losses. The site and field condition of the testing area. So the evaluation of the machine was conducted at Sitio, Barangay Sitio Libuon, Barangay Rosario, Tumangas, Iloilo. And the area was surrounded by cassava, sugarcane, and papaya plantation. It was also near to households and roads. The area was newly utilized for corn production and proper land preparation was practiced by the farm owner in the corn plantation. The variety of the corn was M1400 hybrid corn variety. The hill spacing was 12 inches, while the row spacing is 60 centimeter. The maturity of the corn was 124 days, and the moisture content was 18.83%. So that is the picture of the uh, area. So the instruments used. Measuring tape. The measuring tape was used to measure the distance from point A to point B, which is a total distance of 30 meters in each trial. The digital timer was used to collect the time of operation. The weighing scales were used to weigh all the necessary weighing stuff. The beaker was used to to measure the fuel consumed by the combined harvester. The nylon bags were used to collect all the 
harvested corn that, that came out from the main outlet. The sighting pens were used to to, to put the no, digital grain moisture meter. The digital grain moisture meter was used to determine the, the moisture content of the kernels. The noise level meter was also used to determine the noise level of the machine. The resealable bags were used to put the grain samples to be collected to be performed in a laboratory analysis. The digital camera was used to document the whole con conduct. So these are the data collected. Area covered in meter squared. Total operating time in second. Average working width, which is the average working width of the combined harvester. The fuel consumption in meters. The weight of separated kernels. And weight of clean kernels, weight of unshelled kernels, weight of unpicked corn cobs, weight of crack kernels, the noise level, moisture content, and distance travel. So these are the resort, results and observations. So the field performance of Yanmar AW70D corn combined harvester has a cutting width of 1.95 throughout the whole operation. The forward speed was also computed to be 4.40 kilometers per hour. So the theoretical field capacity was in hectares per hour, which is one hectares per hour. The effective field capacity of the machine has an average of 0 0.85 hectares per hour, and the field efficiency, which is 85.67%. So for the separation or blown losses, the average kilogram was 0 0.229 kilograms, which resulted in a percentage value of 1.05%, which passed the standards of the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards. For unshelled loss, it has a 0 0.05 kilograms and has a percentage value of 0 0.256 percent which also pass the Philipp the PAE standards for um, peak losses the average kilogram was 0 0.484 kilograms and has a percentage value of 2.32 percent which also pass the standards of the PAE standard percentage of crack kernels of the Yanmar AW70V corn combined harvester so the average mechanically shelled kernels were 15 and the manually was 10.7, which did not pass the standards. And also for the mechanically broken kernels, which has the weight of 4.99 grams and has a percentage value of 4.99, which did not pass the standards. And also for the percent purity, it has a percentage of 97.87, which passed the standards of PAES. And for, total, for the total combined loss, it has a 3.56% uh, value, which did not pass the PAES standards. For the cost difference in the use of mechanical and manual harvesting, the manual harvesting was 11,500 pesos per pesos per hectare. For using the combined, it was 15,000 per hectare and the cost difference was 3,500 pesos. So the conclusion, field capacity is 0 0.85 hectares per hour. The field efficiency of the combined harvester was 85%, which is higher than typical combines according to ASAE. Separation of or blower loss of 1.05, unshelled loss of 0 0.256%, and peak loss of 2.32%, which passed the standards of PAES. While the total grain loss of 3.56% and the percent crack kernels of 11.33 and percentage of mechanically broken kernels of 4.99, which did not meet the PAES the pa standards. Uh, the total operating cost using the corn combined harvester and manual harvesting was 15,000 and the 
11,500 respectively per hectare, which yield an operating cost difference of 3,500, favoring the use of manual harvesting, which is 30.46% cheaper than the harvester. The use of the combined harvester was more costly than the manual harvesting and, and the threshing of corn per hectare. However, the rate of operation was faster. Manual harvesting requires 30% to harvest the hectare of corn field at 8 hour operation per day, while the use of corn combined harvester per hectare can be finished 3% in approximately 2 hours. Recommendations. The machine should be tested in a wet soil condition. The forward speed of the machine should be at maintained to 4.5 meters per hour to have a higher field efficiency. The corn should be harvested using the corn combined harvester at the moisture content of 23 to 28 percent based on FAO recommendations. The corn combined harvester should be used for corn fields which more than a hectare of land. The area should have a wide access of road for easy transportation and movement. The area should be also have enough space for the corn combined harvester to freely move around areas especially during turning. The operator should be well trained in operating, troubleshooting, and minor fixing and repair of the machine. Specialty training for the farm laborer should be done in order for them to operate the machine efficiently. References. Thank you. Thank you, Trian. May long wala kami natulugan. <laughs> Joke. Uh, Miss Trina. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm trying to get information from my office regarding with the cost of rental of the harvester. Since you used here for the combined harvester for corn, you used here the data of 15,000 pesos oh, per sorry. day compared to the manual labor of 11,500. So that's why you, you concluded here that uh, it is more cheaper to use the manual method of harvesting. No, um, I think uh, one of the factor right now in the farm labor that we are uh, no, um, having is that we have problems in in terms of farm laborers. This uh, this is brought about or maybe effect of the four piece that uh, the government is uh, given giving to the less fortunate. Ikanga. So, uh, we will try to validate this data since I think uh, there's something wrong with your comparison when you say that uh, you uh, 15,500. Uh, yeah, 15,000 for two hours only. Oh, so I think there's we need to verify this this data okay. and then mm -hmm. you recommended her that the machine should be tested in a wet soil condition. So actually, since this is a corn Combined. commodity, so dry. we used to have our corn in a dry soil condition. Condition, so it's not feasible on the wet. wet. Condition. Uh, field condition actually. Huh? Okay, sir, thank you. Uh, I just noticed that more information also because uh, you also noted there the losses when using the combined, combined harvester. harvester. Uh, can we also get the economical amounts? It means that if there's unpaid. You say uh, unpicked, broken. If you multiply this into a certain amount, how much that would it be okay, that you could add in your research? Okay, sir. Then also, I don't know why you also put the quality of the corn included in your research, like the moisture content would really matter on the efficiency of the of the harvester because the moisture content is another. I don't know if the harvester also dries. No, I think I've seen that doesn't dry. It just only uh, um, put it into kernel, right? There is a required uh, no, sir, moisture content for harvesting corn using uh, corn combined ah, harvesting. Ah, okay. To avoid losses. Yes, sir. Further losses. Damage uh, corn kernels. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Because I didn't get the 
the idea of uh, moisture content. Maybe it's, uh, it should be post, uh, prior to post harvest, uh, before uh, harvesting, it should be indicated the uh, percent of moisture should be at this level before harvesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. was looking at your uh, losses. Uh, what is the basis for this uh, total combined loss? What specific uh, listed items there okay, in Table 3 are included in the total combined um, loss? You, that the losses that is included in the total combined loss are separated loss, unshelled loss, and unpicked loss. Okay. So, um, but if I compute for the values, I come up with 3.6, 3.6 to 6, not 3.56. Oh, yes, okay. um, also, I think these crack kernels and um, mechanically broken, broken kernels no, uh, are still uh, marketable. Oh, yes, sir. That's why you didn't uh, include them in the losses. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, in a way, Corn uh, will be cracked also. Yes, sir. It uh, will be milled, be, sir. Okay. It can be also milled. Yes. Um, but why is it that you are including this as part of the losses? Um, wait, on which, sir? Where? On uh, cracked kernels oh, and is, mechanically broken kernels. It is uh, in the PAE standard, sir. Ah, okay. So it should be considered. Oh, yes, sir. Now, um, was this... Uh, uh, losses included in the brochure of uh, the equipment? Brochure. Yeah. Did they include this information in their brochure? Oh, no, sir. Mga no, losses. because it is not good for them. Yes, sir. So what is only presented maybe are the good sides. Yes, sir. But uh, the downside is not included like uh, this losses. <laughs> Now, since, for example, um, you have this uh, reported losses, which is below or higher than the PAES standard, can, can you recommend, based on this result, for the what, uh, uh, for the cancellation of the commercialization of this equipment? Cancellation, sir? Yes. Uh, no, sir. Why? Because it passed the PAE standards of the required losses, sir. No, it has not passed. Oh, the Based on your data, the, 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 the losses is higher than the PAE standard. Ah, uh, no, sir. Uh, sir, it is lower than the it passed sir, 1.05 and the maximum is 1.5 sir. So it passed the pass, so losses. Oh sir. Separation unshelled and pick. Lo losses yet. Ang combined losses. Ang total sir. Oh. Uh -huh. Awa sir. Ara oh, ato. Oh sir wala. Oh dos ang paes siya ya. 3.56. Oh, sir. So on this ground, can you recommend for the cancellation of uh, the permit of this equipment for, for commercialization? And no, sir, because there are factors that affect the losses of using the combined, sir, which is the degrees of moisture content, which should be 23% to 28% according to Food and Agricultural Organization. So, what is the relationship of that moisture content in relation to separation or blower loss, to unshelled loss, unpicked loss? The moisture content has nothing to do with the unpicked loss. The unpicked, for example, is already 2.32. Meaning you have a standing corn, yet your uh, combined harvester was not able to pick your produce. At 2.32, and uh, the standard is only 2. Yes? Hi, Trin. Ang 
ang total grain loss mo is 3.56, which is computed. How how did you get that total grain losses? Because when you go back into the other losses, your your the percent losses is uh, had passed Past, oh. the PAES requirements. So how how it would be, how it uh, how is it that the the average the total combined loss is does not satisfy oh. the PAES condition? I also uh, consulted an engineer for this and he said I will find a factor that that uh, reasons the the and I know what is your formula in computing that total loss um, for trial one I added all the total losses which is the separation loss, the unshelled loss, and the unpicked loss, and divided it into the total grain input and multiplied it by 100%. Then those individual losses pass the PAES standards, right? Yes. Then, I don't how know. is it that <laughs> maybe there is something wrong with your computation only? Maybe. I think um, Dominican, the cracked, the mechanically broken kernels, uh, have passed, but the total combined loss based on uh, separation, uh, unshelled, and unpacked loss. No, that's the basis for this uh, 3.56 uh, combined losses. It only covers these uh, three items: the separation, the unshelled, and the unpicked. Right? Yes, but sir. the rest have a separate. Uh, uh, means of uh, determining whether the past the pa is standard. No, I'm only asking that, huh? Okay, that whether in this uh, uh, single uh, uh, criteria no, of the pa is standard, this piece of equipment no, can be uh, what reprimanded or maybe uh, uh, its commercialization can be um, uh, stuffed for a while until such time that uh, it can demonstrate that uh, they have done some modification and as a result, no, they were able to um, incur losses within the PAE standard okay, of uh, 2% or something. I will uh, look uh, through my computation, sir. Okay, I just noticed that there's two uh, language are being used. I think uh, kindly uh, pick one if you want to use maize or corn uh, for the reason. Because some pages use maize and some uh, pages use corn. corn. Okay, sir. Only uh, what language you want okay, to sir. use. Thank you, sir. Okay, Trin, thank you. So, uh, congratulations. We're down to the last three. So, this time we have the 14th presenter. The title for studies design, fabrication, and evaluation of cabinet type Batuan dryer by Bijel Epilepsia. Again, good afternoon everyone, especially to our panelists. I'm Bijel Epilepsia, and my study entitled Design, Fabrication, and Evaluation of a Cabinet Type but One Dryer. In the Philippines, but one trees are grown scattered in primary low and medium altitude forests throughout the country. The specific places, based on my research, is Masbate, in Western Visayas, is in Panay, Negros Occidental, Guimaras Island, um, Samar, Leyte, and Bohol. But one is gaining economic importance. Drying is a common unit operation in food processing facilities to lower the moisture content of food in order to reduce water activity and prevent spoilage or reduce the weight and the volume of food products for transport and storage. What is a fruit dryer? 
Fruit dryer is a device used to dry fruits. It removes the water from water from food so that the growth of microorganism is inhibited, like bacteria and enzymes. It also reduces the weight and bulk of food. Study was to design, fabricate the three-layer fruit dryer and evaluate its performance. And the of April 2019 at a shop in Molo, Iloilo City. The initial testing was done on May 16 to 18, 2019 at Appropriate Technology Center under the College of Agriculture, Resources, and Environmental Sciences of Central Philippine University, Haro, Iloilo City. And the performance evaluation of the machine was done on May 21 to 23, 2019 also at Appropriate Technology Center under the College of Agriculture, Resources, and Environmental Sciences of Central Philippine University, Haro, Iloilo City. The significance of the study. The Batuan fruit dryer will be beneficial for farmers to directly process their Batuan fruit after harvest to avoid the deterioration or the spoilage process and also for the small businesses as an additional income and to practice a conventional fruit dryer rather than traditional one. And also for the community to have a higher supply of at one during its out of season and it also contributes in the technological advancement of agriculture. The methodology. Description of the machine. The machine has a wheels, exhaust, temperature controller, and door. And inside, at, at the right side of the machine is the nichrome wire and the fan. The drying chamber. Drying chamber, this is where air pressure is developed for uniform distribution of the heated air through the, through the material to be dried. The fan. An air-moving device that is used to force heated air through the mass of materials to be dried at the desired air flu, air flu rate and pressure. The drying trays. This is where the sliced but one fruits are placed for drying. The nichrome wires. This serves as the heating material for the dryer. This produces higher heat than other materials. The temperature controller. This device automatically controls and keeps the temperature within the required setting. The principle of operation. The machine source of heat is electricity and the heating material is the nichrome wire. Then the fan is rotating to push the, the heated air inside the drying chamber where the fruits are located. Then the excess air will go out in the exhaust. Performance evaluation. The machine was evaluated for three trials to ensure its accuracy. The, the first step is the preparation of the fruit. Um, the maximum capacity of my machine was two kilogram. Uh, two kilogram of but one fruit is sliced into its average thickness. Then the sliced but one fruit is put in the drying trays for drying. The fruit dryer is preheated at 75 degrees. Then the drying trays with but one fruit is loaded in the dryer for eight hours. Then the data needed for the evaluation of the machine were recorded. The instruments used, the weighing scale to weigh the fresh but one and the dried but one, the knife, the burner caliper, and the timer. The data collect collected was the initial weight of fresh but one fruit the final weight of the dried batuan fruit, the drying temperature, and the th thickness of batuan. The parameters analyzed was the drying capacity. Drying capacity refers to the maximum capacity machine can remove moisture per, per unit time. Then the moisture reduction rate, this is the ratio between initial weight and final weight of the fruit over the actual drying time. The drying, then the drying efe efficiency, the ratio of heat required to vaporize over the heat supplied to the dryer express and percentage. Then the electric energy consumption rate and the operating cost. The results.
as we can see in the table, the average in initial weight, which is the maximum capacity of my dryer, was 2 kg. Then the average operating time of 8 hours, with the result of drying capacity, an average of 0.25 kg per hour, with an average thickness of 21.04 mm. The moisture reduction rate with an aver average initial weight of 2 kg minus the finish final initial weight of average 1.019 with a time dur duration of 8 hours, which results to the moisture reduction rate of an average of 0 0.125 kg per hour. Then the drying efficiency, efficiency was computed with an average Initial moisture content of 96.32, then the final moisture content of 14.83, the heat vaporization of water, which is 2,260, and the moisture removed at an average of 81.32, with a time duration of average 8R, with an average of heat supply of 27,178.3 kilojoules per hour, can give an average drying efficiency of 84.52%. The rated power was an average of 9.3 kilowatts and the operating time with an average of 8 hours will have an electric energy consumption rate of 74.4 kilowatt hour. Then the cost of operation of the cabinet type but one dryer with an investment cost of 25,000 pesos and, and the fixed cost under the fixed cost is the depreci depreciation which is 20.55 the in interest on investment of 16.23 repair and maintenance of 6.83 insurance of 2.05 and the total of fixed cost of 45.68 and the variable cost under variable cost is the electric energy cost which is 120.90 and the labor cost of 200 total of 320.90 a total cost of 366.58 pesos per day and the operating cost of 183.29 pesos per kilogram Conclusions. The machine on the average can dry a 0 0.25 kilogram of batuan per hour with an average thickness of sliced materials, which is batuan of 21.04 mm. The drying efficiency of the machine was 84.52%, which is higher than the given drying efficiency based on the PAES at 75%. The average electric energy consumption rate was 74.4 kilowatt hour, which cost 120.90 per day. The utilization of the machine at an investment cost of 25,000 pesos can give an operating cost of 183.29 pesos per kilogram. The recommendation. The dryer should have a watch glass for visual checking of the samples inside the machine. The door of the dryer should be properly sealed by a heat-resistant material to avoid heat loss during the drying process. The fruit tray should be perforated so that the fruits will absorb the heat available inside the drying chamber. That's all. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm just curious, the dry but one will be still used for cooking, right? Yes, sir. I try it. And uh, the flavor is still there. I try it in a sinigang. First, I boil the but one. Then, when I, when I taste it, it's, it's still the flavor. Then, after, after it, I try to use it in sinigang. And the flavor is still there. Okay. Uh, because I'm curious uh, whether it's efficient to powderize than to dry it. 
I don't know if it would be Czech or maybe soon would be some inter, uh, student would also test if they would uh, powder the bat one and difference between the after drying. And I'm curious also, why did you slice the bat one compared to leaving it as a whole? I sliced the bat one, sir, because it has, it is faster to be dried. That rather than the whole bat one will be put in inside the drying chamber for eight hours. It will not dry for eight hours, sir. Ah, okay. And I'm just curious, okay, uh, I've seen here the picture of your nylon wires being... Nichrome. Nichrome wires being put in these hooks. Are the hooks still alive? Yes, because sir. I changed plastic. the hooks. Ah, okay. I changed the hooks, sir, guy, on my pre-testing. Ah, okay. It's okay. I just noticed the hooks. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Have you done some um, readings as to how you um, uh, dry but one and uh, to maintain its uh, uh, sourness, its quality, whatever uh, substance uh, that is present in but one? Um, I have uh, I have uh, researched that but one is processed as puree and but one powder. But in drying. So in but one powder, sir, they they dry, but they the process is longer than my in my study. There was already a study made, uh, and I think the findings was uh, open dried. Uh, but one is um, has you know has shown that it was able to maintain its uh, substances, optimize it. So um, that's why they have recommended the use of open drying. Only that it's kind of um, expensive, you no? Know? Yes. Uh, because uh, open, I think, uh, is more expensive than the dryer that you have uh, made. But if you can demonstrate that. Uh, Maybe um, the, the quality of your uh, dried bat one is comparable to the open dried uh, bat one. Then maybe uh, you can recommend your equipment. Also, in relation to the uh, issue raised by um, RC in terms of the utilization of your dried bat one, I think uh, uh, what is being considered is. Uh, the processing of batuan into powder, just like um, uh, ano kani na ang yung sambag, no? sinigang mix, no? that you just uh, sprinkle the product, no? um, but I think it would require some another so, study. Another study. study. No? Uh, I, I know the A is uh, doing something on this already. Yeah, actually, I, I'm not part of the research, but uh, as I know, we are producing in Wisby Arc the Batuan powder and the Batuan cubes uh, available. Okay, so... And I think they are using, I don't know what they are using the, in drying the Batuan. Haven't you... Freeze drying, Guru Il, sir. Oh, haven't drying. you visited the Wisby Arc uh, prior to your, or during your... Kanda kung study? No, sir. No. In in line with that, no, siguro one potential follow-up study is to dry it without the seed. So slice it, remove the seed, exp uh, dry it using your cabinet dryer, and then if the appropriate moisture has been attained, it would be subjected for milling because we also have a hammer mill at the but office. But, so Mom, it's difficult to remove the seed. Yes, the challenge the is to remove the seed. It depends on the stage of the fruit. If you have uh, mature, then it's a hard job. But if you have young uh, fruits, Easy for you to slice. Yes, sir. Because the even the seeds are likewise um, soft. No, ni balang ginagamos iyang batuan, ngagagmay pa, na linghod pa, 
pwede na iya pro konti gulang na pero sa amon ya yeah. matiga-tiga na gawa no um if you have a kilo of uh, dried but one no how much are you going to sell I don't know, sir. That's a limitation of my study. I think it would be for the further study, sir. <laughs> no, I think... Include the you, you have to have some uh, idea, some estimate. Because eventually, um, the practicality or the economics of your product would redound to the um, cost or price of your product. If, for example, um, the operating cost for a kilogram of uh, dried uh, batuan is 183 pesos or about 200 pesos, um, would somebody be willing to buy dried batuan at 200 uh, per kilo? No, sir. Would you want, can, would you, are you willing to buy? No, sir. Huh? Because the fre uh, I would rather buy the fresh batuan. Ah, oh, so ikaw mismo naga, nakabuho sang imo technology, na? Remember that uh, uh, ang 200 mo nga drive but one, maybe this will last for 5 years. Kon gamiton mo sa imo siningang. Yes. Granting it is properly dried. <laughs> so 200 lang ha. Ang fresh mo ya bakal kaysa ka kilo. Kon hindi mo gamit tanan tanan madunot na dayon. Ah, okay. Maski ibutang mo pa sa ref. Yes, sir. Frozen. Ah? Frozen. Frozen siya. Oh, mo sa ref mo, no? So, anong problema? Kung maski dried pa, kung dalaon mo to sa amigo mo sa states, no? Kagapang ito sa batuan, basi hindi magpasaka sa kwan, sa quarantine. Right? Madakpan ka, delikado ka pa. Mm. Pero kung powdered siya, like uh, sinagang mix sin sinagang sinigang mix no probatuan sa hindi sa balok ah, sigurado papasa na na yes sir proto do ata ka market cost but one in rockwell is being sold to 300 to 400 a kilo fresh, fresh. Wow. then if you sold it in dried with the same uh, ano i think they would buy the makati people would buy 200 per kilo because the okay, price sir. of one goes to 300 okay. 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 Sangkot ito, no? So, kung fresh, hindi man magdugay, pero kung dried siya, posible magdugay. Like sa mga Indians, wala? Mga Indians, ang muna na dry nila ilang uh, nga chili. No? Yeah. Okay, so, mang dry na lang kita mga commodity, no? And, uh, of course, ang market ara kita. So, thank you, Bedge. So, uh, congratulations. So, let's proceed to the excited presenter. No? 15 presenter. The study is about the design, publication, performance, evaluation of a cassava digger attached to a tractor prime mover by Micelle Taladhai. Okay, good afternoon everyone. I am glad to, uh, to be given an opportunity to present to you this afternoon my thesis entitled Design, Fabrication, and Field Test Performance of a Cassava Digger Attached to a Tractor Prime Mover. So let's start with the question, why have I have made this study? So cassava, or Manihot Escolenta in scientific name and popularly known as balinghoy or kamoteng kahoy, is an annual crop cultivated in tropical and subtropical regions. Due to its edible starchy roots, 
it is considered as the third largest source of carbohydrates in the world. According to Food, Agriculture and Organization, it is a staple food crop for more than 500 million people, especially to those areas wherein cereal and grains are, have a narrow opportunity to grow. And it is also considered as the fourth most important crop, especially in developing countries. So in the Philippines, there are 218,000 Filipino farmers are dependent on cassava production. Philippines are 20th on production and has a world share of only 1%. So Region 6 or Western Visayas, known to have the vast marginal lands for cassava expansion, ranked 9 on yield and 8 for area harvested out of 13 regions in the Philippines. 11,000 farmers are from, from Western Visayas and the number is still increasing. What makes also cassava a emerging catalyst for the national for, for our national for our economy it, it is because it is a source of food feed fuel and numer numerous industrial uses including starch flour and bioethanol for Filipinos. So according to Philippine Statistics Authority as of 2017 the cassava utilization includes processed feeds for 51% food for 10%, feed and waste for 6%, alcohol for 5%, and starch for 28%. However, despite the importance of these root crops, land preparation, planting, management, and harvesting are done manually. And harvesting is the most difficult process in cassava production, which requires more manpower and increases overall costs on production. When you say harvesting, it is the process of loosing the soil, exposing, pulling, and collecting the mature cassava crop from the, from the field. So manual method of cassava harvesting is done by hand or by using a hoe, katlas, or mato. According to Nuke et al., Manual method of harvesting requires 22 to 62 man days per hectare and this allows damage that leads to early deterioration and contributes to high wastage and losses. Thus, to fill in the gap between the manual and mechanized method of harvesting, the design, fabrication, and field test performance of cassava digger attached to a tractor prime mover was made. So the objectives of this study is first to evaluate the performance in terms of operating time, field efficiency, and digging efficiency. Second, to determine whether the machine can dig up a minimum depth of cut of 250 mm as required by the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards. Third, also to determine the loss, the digging loss by using the machine, and lastly, to analyze the operating cost and cost difference of manual versus the mecha mechanical method of harvesting. So the benefactors of the study is first the cassava growers. This implement can be used to reduce labor-intensive and tedious job and lessen the operating time and expense of cassava growers. Second, other farmers who want to grow cassava and to adapt mechanization, this will be a tool in adapting mechanization to accelerate harvesting and maximize production. Third, the government agencies such as the Department of Agriculture, the local government unit, the municipal agriculture, and of course the private sectors wherein they can introduce this implement to the far to and sold to the farmers. And lastly, the researchers, still, this implement can be subject to technical evaluation and development. So the, th the time and place of the study, this implement was fabricated at the local metal fabricating shop in Haro, Iloilo City from April to May 2019. So the pre-testing was done at DA West VR in Barangay Buntatala, Haro, Iloilo City and at Barangay Palagon, Pavia, Iloilo in different soil conditions. So the performance evaluation of the machine was done at Sitio Salong, Calaya Nueva, Valencia, Guimaras last October 17, 2019. 
So the machine has the following design criteria. First, the availability of the material. So the location of the performance evaluation and the plantation that were utilized during the conduct was identified by the DA Gameras. So the depth of cut has a minimum, uh, according to bias, it must have a minimum of 25 cm. So the effective digging width based on the actual measurement during the conduct of the study was 98 cm. The digging efficiency, according also to PAS, must have a 98%. Also, the digging assembly, the implement, is composed of standard frame, soil breaker, soil guide, digger base plate, digging blade, and implement stand. The construction of materials, the implement was made of coupled angle bars, mild steel, semicircular discs, bolts and round pipes that are recycled and are locally available. So manpower requirement, it is operated by only one person and the investment cost is not more than 50,000 pesos. So the machine has the following parts and descriptions. First, the frame where the standard is fitted. Second is the standard which connects the frame to the digging assembly. The soil guide, which turns the soil to one direction only. The soil breaker, which breaks the cat soil. The digger base plate, which serves as support for the digging blade. The implement stand, which support, supports the machine from imbalance. And lastly, the digging blade, which digs and loosens the soil. So the principle of operation of the machine, the this implement is uh, attached to a Category 2 uh, four-wheel tractor on the three-point hitch system. So the operation starts when the tractor is driven forward. The, digger, the, uh, the digging blade will, will dig the cassava roots, loosen them up, and, and then with the, so with the help of soil guide, it will stay beside the digger and then it will be manually collected. So the operational pattern that was used was a headland pattern to so minimize the non-working time. So the performance evaluation, so the cassava stems or the cassava plantation was in Gimaras was utilized to, uh, to evaluate the performance of the machine before it was harvested, it was stopped, the stems were, were tapped 20 to 30 centimeters from the ground surface and with the use of the implement attached to a tractor, then the last picture is the output, which is the harvested cassava tubers. Next, the instruments that were used. The sieve, this was used to determine the, text, the, the soil type or texture of the soil. Next is the oven, the, to, used to determine the moisture content present in the soil. The beaker, which was used as a container of the soil to be oven dried. The timer, used in measuring the operating time. The measuring tape, in, used in measuring field dimension. The steel rule, which was used in measuring the machine's digging width and depth. The vernier caliper used in measuring the material thickness used in fabrication. The weighing scale used to measure the weight of the cassava, cassava tubers. The labeling tags which used in recording the date of test and trial numbers. The sampling bags used to contain the soil samples. The sacks used to contain the cassava roots. And lastly, the four-wheel tractor which was used to pull the implement. So the result, so on average, on three trials, the average theoretical field capacity was 0 0.30 hectares per hour, which was computed by multiplying the soil resistance, the digging width, and the digging depth. The average actual field capacity for three trials was 0 0.21 hectares per hour, which was computed by dividing the area over the total operating time. So dividing the theoretical field capacity and the actual, the actual field capacity over the theoretical field capacity 
gives the field efficiency of 69%. So as farmers practice and manufacture standard, the minimum field efficiency should be 60% and the result is higher. And field efficiency is greatly affected by soil condition, field condition, machine condition, machine operator, and weather condition. And it was also observed that this field efficiency could be, could be increased if not affected by the following specific factors. First, the heel length is shorter than the row length. Second, the turning technique of the tr of tractor operator which affects the total operating time and the trees around the area that also affect the space for turning. So the depth of cut and digging efficiency of the machine so the digging depth of the machine based on actual measurement was 31 centimeters. Based on the Philippine agricultural engineering standards, the minimum depth of cut must be 25 centimeters and, this, that, and the actual digging depth of the machine is, satisfies the condition of the Philippine agricultural engineering standards. So the digging efficiency, which was computed by uh, dividing the weight of the dag cassava over the weight of dag plus weight of andag cassava, which the dag cassava were manually harvested since it was not uh, the andag cassava were manually harvested since the tractor has not ha, ha, had not harvested harvested those uh, tubers that left on the soil. So the digging efficiency on a, on actual uh, conduct was 96.25%. So based on the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards, the minimum digging efficiency must be 98%. And that is behind the condition required by the PAES. And the factors that affects based uh, on what I have observed during the conduct was the manual and unaligned planting of cassava stems. Second, the unaligned stems were not harvested by the machine and the tree that obstructed the area. Next is the digging loss of using the machine. Digging loss was computed by dividing the weight of damaged cassava tubers over the total weight of harvested cassava or the weight of dug and undug cassava tubers. So on actual field performance, the digging loss was 6.50%. And according to, Phil, to uh, Agri African Journal of Agricultural Research as of 2017, manual harvesting has a digging loss of 4.32 to 19.55% depending on soil type and condition. And the, the digging loss that was obtained on actual for field performance of the machine is in between the range. But it was also observed that this could be decreased if the proper land preparation was practiced by the farmer for the proper alignment of the heels of cassava tubers. The operating cost of the machine. So the investment cost of the machine was 50,000 pesos. The, the total variable cost, uh, the total fixed cost was 408.33 pesos, which includes depreciation at 150 pesos, which was uh, obtained by using straight line method at 10% salvage value with a five years lifespan and operated 60 days per year. Second in, is the interest on investment, which is 133.33 pesos, which was obtained at 20% of the investment cost. The repair and the main, repair and maintenance, 83.33 pesos, which was obtained at 10% of investment cost. And lastly, the insurance, which is 41.67 pesos, which was obtained at 5% of investment cost. So the total variable cost is 5,608 pesos, which includes fuel, tractor rental, and labor. Labor at 600 pesos. Fuel at 600 pesos and the tractor rental is 4,000 pesos. So the operating cost is 3,338.29 pesos, which was computed based on actual field capacity, which is 1.68 hectares per day. So comparing the manual method of uh, harvesting versus the mechanized method of harvesting, so manual method uh, cost is 9,000 pesos, 
which was obtained by multiplying the number of persons per day required to harvest a hectare of uh, cassava plantation at the rate of 300 pesos per day. So 30 persons was assumed by, uh, by basing on what I have said on the introduction, according to Nuke et al., a hectare of cassava plantation uh, harvested manually requires 22 to 62 mandates per hectare. And the mechanized method of harvesting based on the computed on, on the previous table, it's 3,338.29 pesos. So getting the difference between the two, it is 5,661.71 pesos. And this shows a big monetary difference between the two uh, methods of harvesting. And this savings of the farmer could be used in other uh, farm utilization to increase or to generate more income or even they can use this on household uh, expenses. So conclusion, the machine has an overall dimension of 115 centimeters in length by 84 centimeters in width and 90 centimeters in height. The minimum power requirement of the, of the machine is 70 horsepower. The operating capacity is 1.68 hectares per day. The field and digging efficiency of the machine is 69% and 96.25% respectively. The minimum depth of cut of the machine is 30 centimeters. The investment cost is 50,000 pesos and allows an expense of 3,338.29 pesos per hectare and have an operating cost difference between the two methods of, 5, 000, of not less than 5,000 pesos. So recommendations, this machine should only be used to a plantation, plantation area having a flat ter terrain, preferably at less than 5% slope. It should be operated when the soil is dry or at low moisture content in order to minimize unproductive time, specifically on clay soils. So the tilt angle should be at least 20 to 25 degrees. The operating speed of about 5 to 6 kilometers per hour. The cassava tubers must be planted aligned as possible to allow better maneuvering of the tractor, leading to minimize digging loss and undug roots. The row spacing should be at the minimum of 0.8 meters if the cassava tubers are planted on hills to avoid damage caused by tractor and operation. The operator should be skilled in operating, especially during turning technique. Area should be free from obstructions and has enough space for turning to assure total coverage of digging cassava tubers, thereby not affecting the field capacity. And lastly, care should be practiced in operating the tractor and in collecting cassava tubers so that it will not lead to breakage and losses from the soil and to contamination that may evolve, evolve into spoilage. That's all. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Sel. Oh, thank you, my mom. Kapoy. Kapoy magbakatudo. Let's wait for their questions. Okay, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much for this nice presentation. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that there would be a minimum of steam cutting of the cassava plant prior to harvesting. Is that right? Yes, sir. 20 to 30 centimeters uh, from the ground surface, so that it would it would be not uh, it would be safe for the tractor to harvest the cassava tubers, sir. Because the height of cassava stem is. Higher than me. <laughs> Higher than me. Uh, <laughs> and it would be uh, not. It would not be safe for the operator to harvest cassava tubers when if the stem is not topped. Yes, because I noticed that it not be included in the computation of the cost. I think it should be computed. Yes, the cost. Uh, on the labor cost, or it was uh, it was included already. In the, the five hundred the two days, sir. In the labor costs, on oh. the operating costs, sir. Of 600 labor uh, costs? Yes, sir. How much, in, in, how much time was uh, 
the um, according I, I've asked the owner of the cassava plantation what is the rate of uh, of um, harvesting cassava tubers if they will get uh, if they will uh, get somebody to harvest their cassava he told me that uh, uh, 300 pesos per day is the rate sir and uh, I assume to um, to have two persons to assist in cutting cutting the stems and also uh, manually picking the cassava tubers that was harvested by the tractor per day. Therefore, in the mechanization, you are the considered the uh, steam cutting process yes, as the sir. labor, yes, which is 200 pesos. Do you recommend that this process would be also mechanized? Cutting, sir? Yes, actually, I am. I am. I want to to design also <laughs> together with the cassava digger a cutting date for this time. However, it is already difficult for me since the cassava the the stem cutter should be attached in the front, not in the back, together with the uh, with the cassava digger at the back. So I didn't pursue anymore that it would uh, that. I did not pursue any more to design a cassava stand cutter. Yeah, uh, on the economic side, you mentioned that if the farmer invests 50,000, would it be really uh, for them to buy this uh, implement or just rent it out since it would become also with a tractor, which a small uh, stake uh, farmer would not able to buy a tractor? If you could see on my operating operating cost computation the uh, tractor was rented sir there is a tractor rental because during our conduct it is already a bigger expense for me in transporting our available tractor here in Iloilo so we just go for a tractor rental there at Gimaras the Gimaras sir uh, what I meant is would the farmer really uh, purchase a 50,000 implement that needs a tractor or it would be feasible for more economical for a farmer just to rent a tractor with a harvester or a digger because you need a tractor still yes sir while if you don't have a tractor then and if you invest 50,000 it's just worthless then better to that's why I'm asking if yeah. it's uh, economical it's that economic. a farmer to rent than to really invest it's better 50, to 50,000 investment. I think I don't, I don't try to solve with a uh, computer. I, I haven't tried to compute whether which is most uh, economical, but, but um, if the farmer will invest on on my implement and he could also be use it in renting it to the other farmers so that it would the investment cost could be recovered it is also better that he will he will um he will go for a rental together with the tractor and the implement but if a farmer have a large scale large scale plantation he could it's better for him to buy na lang the implement and of course a tractor or go for a rental um, i can see the, the wisdom from the uh, point uh, raised by rc you see um, the going rate for a tractor for plowing huh? A hectare is uh, 4,500. Depending now, on the implement, sir, in our company, we are for different custom cost is given to every implement. But on the average, that is yes, the, rate, sir, yes. the going rate. No? So, if you have to rent a tractor for 4,000 no, and then include the, the equipment, no, let the tractor owner instead of having a plow <laughs> he has to put the tractor has to pull that digger yeah. and then rent also for 4500 it would be a lot advantageous on the part of the farmer Sir? you don't have to buy any more the 50000 digger 
Sir, ang... Pwede. Kaya in our part, um, we are doing also, sir, what they call, what the... Custom plowing. Technical, yes, custom, custom plowing, plowing operation service, so, uh, what we call that. Ang um, renting, sir, a tractor together with the this plows or harrows or any implement available to us, uh, custom rate is 5,500, renting both implement and tractor. Ma per hectare. Oh, mahal na sa inyo galit to. But, so sa amon barato lang. Well, I die, sir. For five lang ya. Dena, na, sir. Dumangas eh. Oo. Oh, Galupad pa yamon traktora. Jen, how much is your <laughs> tractor rental during the, ano, conduct? Five plus, five to seven thousand, sir. Oh, may nagkinan siya to sa five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, like to go back, bala, and the labor cost mo, I think is very small. No, we're talking about a hectare. Eh, no? Yes, sir. Your, your computation is on a per hectare per basis. Hectare. No, can you imagine a hectare of land? Yes, sir. and you have to hire two people only. Yes, to um, cut up your uh, cassava stalks. Yes, sir. I don't think um, they can finish the whole hectare in one day, the two of them. Yes, sir. So it the 600 will not be enough. Plus, you have to separate individual uh, tubers yes, from sir. the clump of uh, cassava, uh, which is a result of the digging. So, um, for one hectare, that was not included. Sir, so, but... The labor it... cost. Because it has to be done manually. Ang ginimo lang isang digger mo, again, Gin, ano yan, gin paalsa. Yes, sir. Di ka talapik pa na yes, sila. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, dapat kwaon muna, hindi ba? Hindi yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you need manual labor also. We have and done that. You have a hectare of that. Yes, sir. No? So, that should be likewise imputed in your cost. Yes, sir. Okay. In the labor cost, that is uh, two persons per per day, per hectare. So, hindi lang sa realistic. No? Nga, amugid na, kagamay lang. But, sir, I think if I will increase the number of persons uh, for labor. Small, I think a small increase will add up into the operating cost. Yeah, it's okay. Basta more realistic lang ang aton estimate. Yes. <laughs> then, okay, sir, okay. Um, I have some question on that um, digging losses. Digging losses, okay. sir. Okay. I think um, what you included in your digging loss is only the weight of damaged cassava roots. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what about the undug cassava? So, uh, what I mean of digging loss there, sir, is uh, the, the cassava tubers that is not already marketable. But if you have not dug that cassava, it will never be marketable. <laughs> Idag, sir. Hindi mo lang mo. Ang ato lang na istorya niya, ang e-port, sang kwan mo, sang machine mo mo, ang ginkali okay, okay. lang. Okay, okay, sir. Ang wala iya yeah, yung makali, you know, the losses ko na yan. That's like yeah. unpicked corn, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You see what I what we mean? No? Kung sa corn man, bala sa corn uh, harvester, kung wala iya ma-pick, losses na. Di ba? Oo. Di ma- Maman, wala ka naman to do. Guwang naman na bayad mo to sa pangkali naman to. Uh, yes, sir. Wala ma, no. Ina, ako nakita nila. Pero iba na ba? Say, wala lagi na makita. Oh. <laughs> you see? Okay, so, I think sir. this should be factored out. If you have okay, done okay, that, sir. your percent digging loss should increase to 10.6%. Sir, then, I will find another study to be compared with that, sir? Yes, you can. But I think, uh, I mean, theoretically, that should be the practice. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, sir, call the sir. Karun lang Sir Barogo. Okay, sir. Okay, ma'am. Saved by the bell. So, thank you, sir. Okay, sir, may balak. Ako nga introduce ni sa DA. 
meeting actually na lang the doctor. department of agriculture is also purchasing that implement actually oh uh, why don't we why don't you that's go why i'm about to ask sir. you if uh, your design is uh <laughs> <laughs> okay lang sir pwede po one minute <laughs> No, no, no. My, my, my input is if there is somebody who is interested to to use that, then since this is a, a what's this? A completion of the requirement of the school, you know. So there, there's a need for a discussion on who owns the. The proper, the intellectual property, for all the the projects that the students will submit as compliance to their academic requirements, there's a need to uh, ask permission to the university as to its use. But we're not saying you cannot use it outside. But there's a need for a permission from the university. <laughs> Sir, may pangako ka. Okay, sige. So, thank you, Sel. And again, congratulations. So, uh, save the best for last. So, we have Patrick, John Patrick E. Casipe. He will be presenting his study about the design, publication, performance evaluation of a laboratory tilting flume with interchangeable we're attachment. So, ginto na siya man sa department, no? Ang implement na niya. Good afternoon, everyone. I am John Patrick E. Casipe, and I will pres present to you my research proposal entitled Design, Fabrication, and Performance Evaluation of a Laboratory Tilting Flume Performance Evaluation of a Laboratory Tilting Flume with Interchangeable Wear Attachments. So first, let's define irrigation. So, irrigation is the artificial application of water to the land for the purpose of agricultural production. It is the most important water use sector, accounting for about 70% of the global freshwater withdrawals and 90% of consumptive water use according to Cybert. Being a limited natural resource, water discharge used in irrigation system must be carefully controlled and monitored to ensure sufficiency in supply. Next is the commonly used water measuring structures or flumes and weirs. So, flumes are specially engineered structures that are used to measure the flow of weir in open channels and they are static in nature or having no moving parts and develop a relationship between the water level in the, in the flume and the flow rate by restricting the flow of water in a variety of ways. So weirs are common and simple methods of measuring the flow of water for open, cha open channels and at its simplest, a weir is an obstruction placed in a channel over which water flows and often this flow is over a specially shaped notch or opening set above the floor of the channel. Next is... Next is the flow measurements and monitoring along the conveyance structures to ensure system efficiency needs considerable time, effort, and sufficient knowledge of the person in charge. However, commercially available tilting flume needs a large space requirement and is very expensive. <clears throat> the study in the design and fabrication evaluation of the tilting flume with interchangeable wear attachments 
primarily aims to provide manageable size, equipment, and low cost. This is also to provide an uh, accurate simulation of different hydraulic parameters vital in operation of an irrigation system. So what are the importance of a tilting flume? First, the, the tilting flume demonstration provide proper, uh, rather provide proper demonstration on the actual flow of water, sediment transport phenomena, and to teach students to make accurate flow measurements or carry out basic researches, it could simulate different hydraulic parameters vital in irrigation system. Then the objectives of the study. The general object the objectives of the study is to design, fabricate, and to evaluate the performance of the laboratory tilting flume with interchangeable wear attachments. Then the specific objectives are design a tilting flume with interchangeable wear attachments and second, determine the flow rate of the flume at 0%, 1%, and 2% slope. Third is to evaluate the accuracy of a laboratory tilting flume at varying slopes. Then lastly is to analyze the cost of fabrication. So let's proceed to the significance of the study. It is beneficial to the following. First is to the students. The development of the tilting flume or the laboratory tilting flume can be used by students in the conduct of their laboratory exercises on flow measurement. This can also be utilized in subjects like hydrology, irrigation and drainage, um, fluids, and hydraulics. For the faculty and staff, this study can be source of a reference for students and faculty and staff researchers interested for the development and improvement of the laboratory tilting flume. Next is for the educational institutions. The new equipment can help educational institutions provide better understanding and demonstration of the determination of the different hydraulic parameters related to the field of study of the students. And lastly, to the researchers. This study can be utilized as one of the basis for future resources and can be subjected for further development of other researchers. Next is time and place of the study. It was fabricated last December 2019 to January 2020 in Haro and, Iloilo, and La Paz, Iloilo City. The machine pre-testing and performance evaluation was done at Appropriate Technology Center of Central Philippine University. So the design criteria of the equipment. First is the water availability. availability rather. The water utilized for the operation of the equipment was obtained from the tap water. And since the flume is circulated, the water all throughout the operation was recirculated. The next, uh, the capacity of the equipment. So the equipment has a capacity, or the flume of the equipment has the capacity of 12 liters inlet and at the some tank of the equipment, it has a capacity of 200 liters. For the construction materials, um, the materials used in the, equipment, in the fabrication of the equipment was bought in the local market here, here in Iloilo. Next is for the manpower requirement. The equipment is operated by one person. But for the measurement of water, flow velocity, and discharge, two persons are needed to ensure accuracy of the data. And the cost of the equipment, the equipment has an uh, investment cost of not more than 20,000 pesos. So the parts of the laboratory tilting flume with interchangeable wear attachments. First is flume. This structure in the system conveys water from the upstream down to the source of the outlet, uh, down to the source or the sump tank. Next is flume support structure. This directly supports the flume and serves as elevation of the soil of the flume. For the inlet tank, this serves as an upstream for the surface. 
Uh, for the system, for electric motor pump, 0.5 HP electric motor pump lifts the water using the operation from the sump tank to the inlet tank. This also provides the means for water circulation during the operation of the equipment. Next is sump tank. This serves as a catchment tank of a discharged water of the flume. Then the pipeline. Pipeline conveys the water from the sump tank to the inlet tank. Next are the weirs. Weirs composed of three interchangeable weirs. These are rectangular, trapezoidal, and triangular weir. The screw jack. It is a screw-operated jack used to adjust the slope of the flume from 0% to 5%. And the control valve. This controls the amount of water delivered to the inlet tank of the equipment. And the spirit level was used to level the equipment with respect to the horizontal axis. So this is the schematic diagram of laboratory tilting flume. First, um, the circulation going up is the inlet, in the inlet tank, then the flow in the flume, and goes out in the discharge end of the flume or in the outlet. For the principles of operation, the laboratory tilting flume with interchangeable weir attachments is used to demonstrate the flow of water along the conveyance structure and irrigation system. The circulation of water is driven by an electric motor pump and the operation of the equipment starts from the pumping of water to its full capacity as the inlet, inlet tank which has its full capacity, a spillway is provided, thus excess water flow spills over the spillway to the flume and are discharged at the end of the flume. The sump tank catches the discharged water from the flume and recirculates in the system through an electric motor pump. So the equipment underwent five trials at varying slopes of 0%, 1%, and 2% for each method in determining the flow rate of the water to ensure the accuracy of the data. First is for the actual flow rate of the water. The inlet tank, which has an 8-liter capacity, was filled with water, and the time was recorded as the water spills over the spillway. Next is for the velocity area method. For the velocity area method, a float method was utilized to determine the flow of water at varying slopes of 0%, 1%, and 2%. The starting point and end point were set to the distance of 1 meter, and a floating device was used to traverse the length of flow, and then the time was recorded as the floating device switches the end point. In order to <clears throat> determine the area and the area, the depth and width of the flowing water was measured using a ruler. For volumetric method, a bucket method was utilized at varying slopes of 0%, 1%, and 2% for five trials. A capacity of the time was set for five seconds to fill the, a five liter capacity bucket. And for control section method, the three weirs was used that the three interchangeable weirs was used, such as rectangular weir, trapezoidal weir, and triangular weir. For rectangular weir, the depth and width, the depth, the height of water flowing, and the length of the crest was measured. For, same with the trapezoidal weir. For the triangular weir, only the height of the flowing water was measured for five trials at different slopes of 0%, 1%, and 2%. For the slope adjustments, so the spirit level was used to level the equipment with respect to the horizontal axis. The indication that the equipment was leveled is that the bubble inside was at the center. For the 1% and 2% slopes, a screw jack which is attached to the equipment was used to lower the elevation of the flume near the discharge end. And the difference in elevation near the discharge end of the flume was calculated as a product of the desired slope, which is 1%, 2%, 3%, and so on, to the effective length of the flume. The instruments used during the conduct of the study was the measuring tape, 
ruler, digital timer, bucket, data sheet, floater, clay, and synthetic sealants. So the parameters analyzed were the flow velocity, flow rate, which was the use of five methods, the actual flow rate of the water, velocity area method, uh, control section method with the use of three weirs, and the volumetric method. Next is the accuracy of the equipment. The accuracy of the equipment was ob obtained by the increase or decrease of the flow rate of the water to the flow rates sorry to the flow rates of the actual flow rate of water minus the the or the difference with the velocity area method control section method and volumetric method over the actual flow rate of the water then the cost of fabrication this refer refers to the total expenses incurred in the construction of the flume. This includes the total materials, labor cost, and contingencies. So let's go to the results. In this table, average flow rates of the laboratory tilting flume with interchangeable weir attachments at varying slopes are shown. For the actual flow rate of water, 0 0.325 0 0 0 liters per second for 0%, 1% is 0 0.3318 liters per second, and for 2% is 0 0.3402 liters per second. And for the velocity area method, 0 0.2093 liters per second, 0 0.30. 3081 liters per second is 0 0.3484 liters per second at three slopes. For the volumetric method for 0% slope, 0 0.3267 liters per second. For the 1%, 0 0.3387 liters per second. And for 2%, 0 0.3565 liters per second. For the rectangular weir, 0 0.3095 liters per second for 1%, 0 0.3387 for 1%. 1% and 0.3558 for 2%. For trapezoidal weir, 0 0.3076 liters per second for 0% and 0 0.3325 for 1%, 0 0.3548 for 2% and for the triangular weir, 0 0.3096 liters per second for 0%, 0 0.3277 liters per second for 1% and for 2%, 0 0.3 for one liters per second. So this is the relationship to the flow rates to the different methods at 0% slope. While this is the relationship of the flow rates to the different method at 1% slope. And lastly is the relationship of the flow rates to the different methods at 2% slope. Percentage difference between actual flow rates of water and flow rates of velocity area method at varying slopes. So given the average for 0%, 35.59% difference, 7.15%, negative 2.45% for 2% slope. Percentage difference between the actual flow rate of water and flow rate of volumetric method at varying slopes. 0.53% at 0%, 2.1% at 1%, for 2%, 4.8%. For the percentage difference between actual flow rate of water and flow rates of control section method or the rectangular weir at varying slopes. So for percent difference at 0% slope is 4.76, at 1% slope is 2.09%, and for 2% slope is 4.62%. Percentage difference between actual flow rate of water and flow rates of control section method using trapezoidal weir at varying slopes. 5.35% difference for 0% slope, 0.21% for 1% slope, 4.33% for 2% slope. While the percentage difference between the actual flow rate of water and, and flow rates of control section method triangular, using triangular weir at varying slopes, 4.75% for 
zero point a zero percent slope, one point two two percent for one percent slope, one point fifteen percent for two percent slope. Uh, cost of constructing the equipment. So the total material cost was thirteen thousand two hundred fifty, with ten percent of contingency, which was one thousand three hundred twenty-five and forty percent of the labor cost, which is five thousand three hundred, and given a total construction cost of the equipment of nineteen thousand eight hundred eight hundred seventy-five pesos. For the conclusion, based on the results of the study, the following are concluded. The equipment can be used as lab accurate laboratory equipment in measuring the different methods of flow rate of the water at varying slopes of 0%, of 0%, 1%, and 2%. And the cost of the constructing equipment is about 19875 making it low cost for a laboratory equipment and it has a manageable size. It is manageable size. For the recommendation, based on the results and conclusions of the study, the following are recommended to further improve the design and operation. The slope of the inclination equipment can be further increased and evaluated at the varying slopes of 3%, 4%, and 5%. Higher power electric motor can be used to increase the velocity of the flowing water. The hydraulic jump of the spillway can be evaluated with an increased velocity. The surface of the flume should be leveled by reducing the amount of sealant used to minimize inaccuracies of the data. The edges of the laboratory tilting flume should be secure to avoid leakages. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. So uh, you're now ready for the questions of our panelists. Yeah, uh, thank you. What I really liked the presentation was on the introduction part, I think, because I'm only first to understand this flume and weirs uh, really what about. No? I have no subject on irrigation, but only fluids. But the question here, are you confident that uh, when this uh, equipment you made would be uh, can be precisely used for activity of the uh, next generation of agricultural engineers? Yes, sir. Thank you. What is your intention of uh, using uh, interchangeable um, wares as attachments? Um, in order to determine the flow rate of the water using rectangular wear, trapezoidal wear, and triangular wear, if their discharge are same with the flow rate of the water. So what is your findings and conclusion on this um, regard? So. Um, as the slope, uh, the the five methods were uh, were shown. Uh, the result of five me methods, uh, six methods shown were closely uh, as a close result with each other. And as the slope of the tilting flume increases, the uh, we are not. I'm not asking about the slopes. Answer. I'm asking about your data, your findings in relation to the different uh, interchangeable wares? Uh, so the flow rates are almost the same, sir, between the different methods and the wares used or the interchangeable wares used. Even at different slopes? Uh, sir. So yes, what sir, sir. then 